So a big story it has been going viral is this woman in New York who had squatters come to her house. When the police showed up, not only did they actively try to defend the squatters, even though the squatters had no evidence they lived there, they ended up arresting the homeowner. We got breaking news today that vigilantes show up to just talk to these guys, just talk to them. And sure enough, as soon as they did, these guys ran screaming. I'm being uh, hyperbolic. They said, OK, we're leaving. We're out because I can only imagine what these guys must have said to them or what the implication was. And this is it. The big news today. Daniel Penny in New York has pled, uh, pleaded not guilty to manslaughter. And ABC News describes him as the man who choked a homeless man to death instead of the Good Samaritan who saved people's lives on a train in New York City. We, we, had, we had the story, what, last week about a, a, a guy getting shot and killed on the train. We have another story. A guy got slashed in the face. When we went to New York to check out the billboards we put up in Times Square that morning, someone walked up to some random woman and just macheted her in the back. And now this guy, Penny, is facing prison because this is what you get in anarcho tyranny. But what you also get is the rise, rise of vigilantes. So we actually have several stories emerging about vigilante groups popping up. But we got a lot more. Of course, there is big political news. Tony Bobulinski testifying Hunter Biden not showing up and Bobulinski saying he personally witnessed Joe Biden committing crimes. AOC loses it. But, you know, we'll get into the heavy politics. We'll get into the heavy politics. The other big story we have is this viral video we mentioned the other day where you've got this guy, I believe he's a Venezuelan uh, uh, individual explaining to criminal aliens how to squat and take over homes. You've got a judge ruling that illegal immigrant criminal aliens are allowed to, to bear arms. And now you've got the Libertarian Party of Louisiana putting out a tweet saying, undocumented or otherwise, you should have guns. So I can only, uh, I don't know, I can only guess at what's going to come. We're going to jump into all those stories. Before we do, my friends, head over to castbrew.com and buy coffee. Appalachian Nights Whole Bean has already sold out. We do have ground still available because this stuff moves like hotcakes. Actually, the new the new analogy is that this stuff sells like Appalachian Nights could sell so much. But uh, if you do want to try a medium roast, I recommend Stand Your Grounds. It is a very similar flavor profile. And when you buy from Casper, you're supporting us because we sponsor ourselves. We run our own uh, our own coffee company. Casper Coffee. And it, when you uh, buy Casper, you're also supporting our physical location, which is currently getting set up. We're waiting on the permits, but it should be done in a couple of months. And we're going to be doing our live uh, members only private events, live audience in Martinsburg, West Virginia at our Casper location once a month, once we get things going. So we can use your support, but also head over to TimCast.com. Click join us, become a member to support our show directly because the show is made possible. Thanks in part to viewers like you. You'll also get access to our Discord server to hang out with like-minded individuals, and that is the most important part. We need you to help build community, to organize, to get informed, and talk with people. And you may find that some of these people live near you, and you'll make new friends. That's what we need to do. We need to build networks. But you'll also get to watch our uncensored members-only show, submit questions, and even call in. Those are Monday through Thursday at 10 p.m. So smash that like button, subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends. Joining us tonight to talk about this and a whole lot more, Clint Russell. Tim, welcome. Thank you. Ian is back from Miami. Uh, Clint Russell, host of Liberty Lockdown, co-host of Tower Gang, which you should not watch, running for vice president of the United States of America under the Libertarian Party. I have I, I disavow LP Louisiana. I'm going to start with that. <laughs> um, what else? I also host the best political show with Luke Radowski and Steph, and you can find us on Rumble at We Are Change. My, my list of duties is too long at this point. I think the important thing people need to realize is that in the Libertarian Party, you actually run for vice president. Yes, um, it, is, it is very unique in that the delegates will actually select both the presidential and the vice presidential candidate. So the, the presidential candidate does not get to select the VP. So we can have a, a very contentious uh, composite ticket, if you will. Uh, theoretically, it could be RFK Jr. and myself, but We'll see if that happens. That would I'm not be sure. very, very funny. Yes, that would be. Right on. We would be at <laughs> at each other's throats twenty four yep. seven. But it'd be interesting. We also got uh, Libby hanging out. I'm hanging out. Hey uh -huh. guys, glad to be here. I'm Libby Emmons with the Post Millennial. And I'm back from Florida. What's happening, everybody? Uh, Ian Crossland. If you don't know me, you do now. I was hanging with Luke Rutkowski, and I had the amazing, fortunate blessing to meet Toby Turner, who I've loved for de like over a decade. Tobuscus, you may have seen his work on YouTube. <laughs> we collabed all week. We were writing music, making skits. He is a hilarious guy and uploaded a uh, parody video that he and I did on his YouTube channel on Tobuscus. So after the show, you're going to want to check that out. 
and have a great night. Let's get rolling. Oh, and Tim, by the way, thanks for using your perception to identify these traps, these crazy things like the slashing and the hurting and the d destruction, because it's like we're navigating this world and you're very aware of these problems. The problem is that the problems are moving. So it's like you can say the trap's there, but like we've still got to learn how to we can't sit still is basically what I'm saying. We have to learn how to how to how to maneuver this reality with all this crazy stuff going on. Well, well, that's I guess that's what we're doing tonight. Yeah, yeah. we got search pressing the buttons. Yo, uh, what's up, Ian? I'm wired. Yeah, it seems like it. Uh, what's up, everybody? Uh, good to see you, Clint, as well. Hell yeah, Serge. Uh, let's get started. Here we go. This is the this is the the big story. I mean, look, we got a lot of news today, but I think this is the most alarming as per how our society functions. From the Daily Mail, vigilantes show up to evict squatters at Queen's home where owner was arrested as neighbors reveal three people have been living there for free and carrying out work inside. And the update from the post-millennial, two squatters vacate Queens home after national backlash. One says he's staying. I'll tell you what I think happens. So we get this breaking news that vigilantes show up to this house. I'll give you a quick context for those that missed this story. Woman in New York, her parents die. She inherits their home and she says, I'm going to sell it. When she shows up to actually check on it, some people have moved in, changed the locks. When she calls the police, the police say to these squatters, can you prove you live here? And when they can't, the police remove the men. The woman then goes to change the locks, but the police say, if you change the locks, we will arrest you. Don't do it. Even though it's her home and those guys have no proof they live there. She changes the locks. It's her house. The cops then come up. The, or before that, this, the, this guy breaks back in the house. The cops then show back up and arrest the homeowner for unlawful eviction. The squatters stay and say, take me to court. Next thing that happens is exactly what we warned was going to happen. Some guys show up and they said to the press, look, we, we, we're going to talk to him. We're going to talk to him. I wonder what they talked about. Because soon after these guys split, not all of them. One guy's on camera being like, I don't know who I paid rent to, but I paid rent. So I live here. And he just seems confused. And then that's uh, the guy who wants his deposit back. Right. He'll leave. They, were, yeah. they, were, they were like, yeah, so you paid the squatters. And he's like, I guess. I don't know. And he's like some old guy with like missing teeth. I'll tell you what I think happened. When what's going to start happening now more than ever, especially with what we see, we're seeing with the Daniel, Daniel Penny case and uh, Daniel Perry in Texas. And now we've got we've got a bunch of other stories I can pull up from the past couple of weeks of vigilante action in New York City. This is it. It, it is the rise of vigilantism because of the crime spike and because of bail reform. I mean, I didn't even mention this in the opening of the show, but Anna Kasparian says if being on the left means supporting bail reform, which lets murderers out of jail, then she's not on the left anymore. And Jenks like, no, 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 it's not true. And she's like, well, I don't know, because they let out murderers in New York. They find these people. They find body parts scattered all over the place. They find these people living in a house with blood, guts and flesh everywhere. And they say, we're not going to keep him in jail. We're going to we're going to let him go. And so she she's losing it. But I'll tell you what I think happens here in this story. We'll get to that one. You know, you know what would happen if these squatters stayed in the building? When two guys show up and knock on your door and say, we're going to tell you one time, you need to leave. That's all they're going to say. I'm not going to say anything else. And what happens next? These squatters will wake up in the middle of the night with a tap on their shoulder. And as soon as they open their eyes, there's going to be two or three guys in ski masks. And one guy's just going to rain a crowbar down on his kneecap. Smack! And then the squatter's going to scream and they're going to say, you've been warned. And they're going to leave. And when the cops show up, if they show up, the neighbors are all going to say, we didn't see anything. That's where we're heading because of the laws they're passing, because the police are defending the criminals. And now you got this crazy story, which we'll get into as well in a minute, of the illegal immigrant criminal alien saying, here's how you steal homes from people in America. Land invasion. That one's particularly disturbing because of the way he was saying it, in my opinion. He was, he was angry. Serious. And he was serious about it. He was like, this is how we go get places to live in the U.S. We just steal them. That video is well, worth watching. That's nuts. When when civilizations stop respecting property rights, this is what you get. I mean, yeah, you have, you got to move your you mic over you to got, you. can't hear what you're saying. <laughs> you mumbled the most um, amazing thing, sir. What was it? <laughs> I thought you were going to keep saying that, but I said it last night. Exactly. So when you said it, I was like, yeah, I said exactly the same thing last night. Property okay. rights. And Phil talked about it too. Property rights. Once they go, like every, everything falls apart. It, well, exactly. Yeah. And and in that void, what, what arises? Well- mafiosos people, people that will come in and they will enforce property rights on behalf of the citizens and and that is the only just way of dealing with property is that you have to you have to have some sort of chain of title if you're going to totally disavow and disrespect that in the in the state of new york well then you're going to see the rise of mafia again Let, let's be real all these flash mob burglaries and robberies that we're seeing 
would not happen if the mafia still existed the way it did, you know, back in the day. Capone, for right. instance. At least the narrative we think we know about the mafia. When a couple when a couple of local guys show up to your little grocery store and they say it's time to pay us our protection money. And that's viewed so negatively in like movie tropes. It's like, oh no, they're shaking me down. And if you don't pay, they smash things up. I tell you this, I wouldn't want to live that way. I don't know if any, anybody would want to live that way. You want to you want to live in a world where when someone comes and threatens your business, the cops are there in a moment's notice and they deal with it. And we have the right to defend ourselves while we're waiting for them. Like that guy in New York, they're trying to kill him, mm -hmm. the bodega owner. And then when he wrestles the knife away and stabs back, they lock him up. Yeah, but, they but didn't, my, my they point didn't real eventually. quick, if if we still lived in that world where the mob guys came down, went to this bodega, went to this uh, uh, department store and said, pay us our protection money. These these roving bands of, of criminal gangs wouldn't exist. The moment any one group of kids or young men or whatever went to rob a store, they'd wake up in the middle of the night. There'd be two guys in ski masks. They'd tap them on the shoulder and there'd be a crack with a crowbar in their kneecap. And they'd say, you don't steal from us. See, the organized crime wants to keep everything in line so they can keep the money flowing. These roving gangs are destroying the system all around them. So it's it's barbarism versus conquest. The mafia strategy was, we're going to own the territory. You keep working because I want money next week. Mm -hmm. What we're seeing now is barbarism, which is loot, pillage, burn. Well, and it's what we're seeing in a lot of places that are, you know, spilling refugees out into the U.S. We're seeing that in Haiti. The capital is completely under siege basically you have government officials resigning because they can't maintain any control over the population but the thing with the the thing with the squatters and we've seen this in a couple of places we've seen it in LA we've seen it in Atlanta Philadelphia we've seen this you know across the board squatters break into a house in Florida and they just live there and when the person gets back they have absolutely no rights to their own property i find that as a property owner albeit a recent one really terrifying like, I don't you want just, people in my house. You know? it, it, it shouldn't be this way. But what everyone keeps saying is you just have to use the law as the law stands, which would be if you find a squatter in your house, you draft up a work agreement for the squatter. Mm -hmm. You then sign a lease for your friend. And then your friend calls the cops and says, the guy who works here evicted me illegally. And then what happens is the squatter becomes a worker for you. And you can say, yeah, look, I have a work arrangement with him. Here's my here's my paper. But here, here's the reality. You should, you that seems have, wacky. I know, but but like this is the problem. This is how society breaks down. Exactly. Because people think if I am moral and correct, the police will have my back. I'm a good person. And the cops say, I don't care. Right. I don't care who, well, you, you, who know, you think you are. That's what that's the thing people forget when they call the police. I remember this Australian woman who was shot to death by police, I think in Chicago a couple of years ago when she called police because she thought someone was breaking into the house and then the police showed up and they shot her to death but like that's what everyone forgets when you call police they don't know who the good guy and the bad guy is they just know that there's some people and there's a situation and they're there to protect themselves for the most yep. part and so they look at everybody like they're a criminal this I, is like you know how they talk about you know have the conversation with your kids about the cops that's the conversation i had with my kid about the cop don't call the cops unless you're prepared to get shot by the cops i, I think the the, <laughs> the mistake is in perceiving the state and the mafia to be significantly different i mean what is you, the same sort of uh, you know extortion fee that you pay to the mafia to to lend your business protection, you pay property taxes, you pay local taxes. Like it's still it's still yeah. Contractual. And the mafia is not there anymore. Right, right. But they've they've left because the state became so powerful that they were the biggest gang in town. Now the state, even though it's extraordinarily powerful, it's still deteriorating in its ability to protect property rights. Therefore, you will see people turn back to, you know organized crime to defend their property i my my isn't my, the real reason that we lost organized crime because of the rico act and rudy giuliani like it's well, not it can be argued that but uh, what what is that that's a, that's an extraordinarily powerful gang itself it just became so much more powerful it was able to lock up the smaller gang uh, that that's honestly my perception of the state versus mafia this is it's a monopoly on violence you either you either see the monopoly on violence towards the state or you turn towards organized crime I don't see it as being distinctly different because I still don't have an option to opt out if I want to protect my property. So you're saying it's Rudy Giuliani's fault that all this crime is happening? No, I'm saying he fixed New York as usual. I'm yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. You'd rely on local cops ideally so you don't have some organized state 
Well, yes, the protection, the, the, the lowest level monopoly on violence is, is uh, preferable to the highest level for sure, which uh, is why I, I, I lean towards Texas when it comes to the border dispute versus the feds who have completely abdicated their duty. I'm trying to wrap my mind around property rights and the evolution of property rights in the United States. I imagine when we first this country began, it was like, get off my lawn. I mean, it was just like, shoot first, don't ask questions. Basically, when there was like the, the frontier, you yes. know, there were the property rights were I have a gun, basically. So when did it how did it evolve into like. I'm safe now because my property is protected by the government. I think it's a it's a cultural framework, uh, but yeah, I mean, Lockean property rights is kind of where where the concept comes from. America was obviously very special. I think this is what people really need to understand is that what made America the wealthiest country on earth, primarily above everything else, above our military might and everything else, was the fact that we honored property rights. And we and when you are an investor, which I was a money manager for you know 15 years. The, the biggest thing you're looking for is obviously above and beyond return on investment is security of your investment. And if you don't have that, you're not going to deploy any capital. It freezes up the market. New York is a perfect example. Kevin exactly. O'Leary won't shut up about it. Yeah. But I agree with him. I'm just saying he, this man is pissed. Well, mm -hmm. he, he, the reason he's pissed is because he understands this is existential to his business. He is a real estate investor. He is a investor in businesses. If you don't have <clears throat> clean chain of title and enforcement of property rights, you do not have your wealth. It is the end. Yeah, it is the end of problem. the capitalist model. We, we, so we have no choice right now but to start seeking out a Plan B secondary coffee distributor. Cast Brew is uh, our distributor is based in uh, just out, not in New York City, kind of maybe like an hour outside or or, or around the uh, in the metro, but in the suburbs in a very moderate area. The guy who owns it's super cool. They're they're great. They're anti cancel cancel culture. They're good people. But we have we that doesn't even mean anything at any moment. New York has stated they will seize the assets of any business that dare oppose them. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking with the team and I'm like, do we just say it's going to be fine? Nothing's going to happen. And then one day Casper is shut down and no. we're, on, we're on a one year hiatus where we have no no coffee production. Or do we start looking for reserve distributors who can pick up our formulas and start you know, helping uh, uh, d distribute our product for us in the event that New York makes this move, which... I got to be honest, it's it's not even about, I don't think that New York goes to our coffee company. It's like, it's a lottery ticket's chance. What I think happens is New York passes a law, which puts a boot down on all of the businesses and then creates a very serious problem. You look at what they're already doing. They might put a morality bill or something. Mm -hmm. Hate speech. Who they knows? do any of that. And then there's going to be a, a, a tax or a levy or some ridiculous a, attack on the business. So it's just like, I don't know what's coming. All I know is, we have no choice now because of what New York's New York is doing. New York State with, I'll just I'll keep it as simple as I can. New York is a communist state. Yes. I don't like the word communism because it's archaic, and we're dealing with something kind of different, but rooted in. So you can call it neo communist or neo com or something, but there needs to be a new word for what it is. Anarcho tyrannical communism. It's, no, no, <laughs> it's 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 exactly how communism functioned. Yeah, this well, is it's a, abolition of property rights. Well, but this is, this to, is the, the, you uh, need loyalty uh, to the state. Solzhenitsyn wrote have, about this. If you don't this have loyalty a, to the what's state. What's happening with crime and with property is exactly what Solzhenitsyn wrote about. And so the issue now with New York is the state has decided arbitrarily they can take from whoever they want. They can do whatever they want. There are no rules. Nothing applies to them. Yes. I hope Trump gets elected and I hope Trump sends in the feds and just occupies New York. <sighs> Well, I can't I can't go with that uh, direction because I'm still a states rights guy, and I think that New York has has every right to deteriorate right before our eyes. But um, obviously, you, that is incorrect. They they have an obligation to uphold the constitution of this country and adhere to the supreme law of the land, which they're not doing. Well, when a state, it's like. It, if that's that, the case, that, 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 if that's the case, then Texas can't enforce the border because it's the feds that have taken that duty on. I go I go the other route where I say decentralized <clears throat> authority allow the states to to compete innovation that's yeah. actually incorrect because the ninth and tenth amendment protect texas's right to defend itself in the abs and and i believe how has that worked <clears throat> out for us so far tim it doesn't matter how it works out for us what matters is texas has the absolute right to defend itself when the federal government is derelict they're not imposing themselves uh, uh, against the rights of their citizens new york is attacking the constitutional rights of american citizens that that is a rogue state that needs to be brought to heel well, I mean that is that is the justification that leads towards civil wars. If, I, I am if, in favor of If the of federal government divorce. cannot enforce the Constitution, then there is no United States. So would it be Agreed. like they, they'd re reduce funding to New York or something? They yes. would they would strip funding, but I think they, should, they need to go one step further. I think 
I hope Trump gets elected and, the, and, he, and he, he appoints someone, maybe Cash Patel uh, to AG, and then they immediately begin all the criminal probes and inquiries into Letitia James and Garan, for instance, uh, Letitia James's donation history, all of that stuff. And at the very least, there should be tons of civil rights lawsuits brought against her and all of these other officials in New York City and state. Kathy Hochul, for instance, bringing in National Guard, while in New York, the big story that Anna Kasparian is going off about, and I completely agree with her, is the, they found people living in a home with dismembered mm -hmm. body parts, and they say, we're not going to put them in jail. They're, you're free to go. Right. Your, your trial will be at a later date. This, Kathy Hochul wasn't even elected. This is nuts. No, she was the lieutenant governor under Cuomo. So, so she was she was elected because well, we elect she, the uh, lieutenant governor. So she was ready to go. She was like the next, but she next one in line. She was basically like VP. Yeah, <laughs> but like I think that she and Letitia James colluded to to oust Cuomo from office. I think it's pretty clear that that's what they did. Why do you think that? Because they they drummed up all of these, you know, like sex things against him that were basically fake sex things and then as soon as they pushed him out of office and got H kathy hokel in there they dropped all the charges well can let's I, let can i circle back to, to yeah. your point earlier because i think that the the real the real question of our time honestly and it's a big one is have we become so different as a people culturally and otherwise that we can still coexist and do you want to use the federal government to bring these people to heal because the reality is that yes. many people in california and new york do not share my values or our values when it comes to upholding the bill of rights i'm not interested Doesn't in going matter. to war with those people i'm not i don't that, i don't so so the, the thing i disagree with you on is i believe america is a country i believe america exists i believe that we have a constitution laid forth by our founding fathers and a and a great nation was 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 built before our very eyes Agreed. by many people who decided to plant trees whose shade they knew they would never sit beneath indeed now you have communists stripping people of their rights destroying this country and it is imperative this country protects itself what was well, the, uh, the the idea that you would allow an invading force to come in and you'd go, wait, 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 instead of actually defending our territory, let them have it. Well, see, this is the difference, Tim. These aren't invaders. These are people that are ideologically no, they're invaders. invaders. No, I'm talking about the people that come out of academia that believe in communism. These are not invaders. These are people born in America. Right, right. And they bring in millions of people who are invaders. Well, they and do so that too, yes. When those invaders give the far leftists additional congressional seats... Right. Which is what what they're doing. Indeed, between thirteen and seventeen, mm -hmm. yep. it is an invading, occupying force and that it's, opposes and it's on conquest. the. I agree, and, and 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 it is imperative this country brings California and New York to heal. Should we bring back I the uh, per, the the fractional value of a human? Like remember in the Constitution they said that slaves were worth no. what three fourths of a no, human. So illegal immigrants fifths. counting towards. So in regards to counting them towards delegates to the to the no. But you the don't think so? They don't they, 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 so this because is, you're either a citizen or you're not. This is exactly what the argument was in the Civil War. The South said a slave is a person and should count mm -hmm. towards apportionment and voting. Because it gave them more power in the Exactly. And, and the then federal. the Democrats exactly. said they shouldn't count at all. Yes. They're not free sovereign citizens. Right. And so they compromised and the South said, how about this? We count them three fifths. Democrats love having second class citizens. Mm -hmm. It's what they do. Well, this well, is and exactly that's why what... you see so much going on, too. You see people on social media being like, you know, if we get rid of the illegal, illegal immigrants, strawberries are going to cost twenty dollars. Like, do you really want that? We need these people to do all of the work that we're not going to do. No, if you're concerned about the cost of strawberries, you ought to be focused on ending the Federal Reserve. Well, I, I just wanna, saw a I video wanna... of a drones. Have you seen this swarm drones picking fruit off trees and it's going back to the bucket? That's I want to I, I want to jump that. to this clip. This this is uh, Sean Fitzgerald tweeted this out, actual justice warrior. Yeah, this was interesting. A lot of people in America, and yes, that includes on the left, feel exactly like Anna Kasparian in this mega rant. How does it make sense that you have the National Guard searching old ladies in the subway, but the four arrested for dismembering two people get released automatically without bail? It's about three minutes. Got to play it. Dismembering a corpse and hiding a corpse after dismembering it. Not bail, not bail eligible not a serious crime. I'm not even kidding, guys. Like when Joy Behar outlined that case, I was like, she's crazy. This isn't a thing. This isn't real. This isn't real. So I looked it up. It's real, guys. It's real. Listen, if being on the left means supporting this, then I'm not on the left and I'm okay with that. So let me give you the details of the case. It doesn't mean that. Okay, I don't know. Let me Joy give you the Behar's details. On the left. We're all on the left. We don't want people dismembering folks getting released. Only a couple Some of do. lunatic Some do. Some no, do. I know. Anna's completely right.
Yes, one hundred percent right. <laughs> There's videos of people cheering on violence and crime. There's videos of leftists smiling as people are beaten and injured. They cheer for this. We've got viral videos all over Twitter right now of mobs of men beating other people in the street. And they're like, look at these flash mobs like the, the, the violence is getting crazy. And the left and the press and the Democrats ignore all of it because they do want the breakdown. And Jenk, desperate to maintain his position among his viewers, refuses to admit it, while Anna actually looks into it and says it's really happening. And I'll give another shout, shout out to Anna Kasparian. When she looked into the Kyle Rittenhouse thing and goes, I was wrong about that. Remember that one? Kyle Rittenhouse defended himself. She said, oh, he's bad. And then later was like, I actually looked into it and I realized, wow, I was wrong. Props to her. Listen to what she has to say. Listen to this story. Oh, I was going to what I was in the middle of saying is only a couple of lunatic activists yeah. are like, yeah, we're pro dismemberment guys being let go. OK, whatever. You don't represent the left at all. Dismembered at all. bodies. It's so unfair to put them in prison. OK, let me give you the details of the actual case. OK, so four people were arrested in New York after body parts were found in Long Island. OK, dismembered <clears throat> body parts. The victims were, um, you know, two people from Yonkers, older individuals. Suffolk County police say 44 year old Stephen Brown, 38 year old Jeffrey Mackey, 40 year old Amanda Wallace and 33 year old Alexis Neves or Nieves uh, were charged with concealment of a corpse, tampering with physical evidence and hindering prosecution. They have not been charged with murder. Prosecutors told a judge there was so much blood in the pipes, in pipes, sink, shower and toilet of the Railroad Avenue home in Amityville where the suspects were arrested that it was deemed uninhabitable. Police said they confiscated meat cleavers, butcher knives, flesh and body parts. Attorneys for Brown and Mackey admitted, admitted that their clients lived in that home where the body parts and all that blood was found, but denied chopping up 59 year old, the 59 year old woman and 53 year old man whose last known address was in Yonkers. Wallace also lived with Brown and Mackey in Amityville. Police said that Knives is homeless. Okay, all four pleaded not guilty. The judge released them without bail. They were fitted with GPS monitoring and must report in person for in person probation and surrender their passports. I I don't care about their passports. Dude, I, guys, guys, like what? Okay, so did further research cuz I just couldn't believe it. Here's more. <laughs> With 2019 state reforms, mutilation and disposal of murdered corpses are among crimes that are no longer <laughs> bail eligible. Congratulations the New York on that DA. one said the four went to barbaric lengths to cover the crime. What are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? I have no idea. What well, are we doing, Jank? Right. What are we doing? <laughs> what are we doing? Someone tell me what the F are we doing? Yeah, look, no one signed up for this. I that's don't know not how true. That's not laws true. Passed. I went to every progressive conference there was over the last 20 years. He doesn't know how these laws got passed. I, I watched do. it get passed. I we, we, we wrote about it. We all we kept said saying this is a terrible idea. Don't have, you know, no bail all the time in New York City. We saw this. We saw this repeatedly. And then they said, oh, it's not for it's only for nonviolent crimes. And then you'd see some guy get released with no bail and go back and kill his girlfriend did, who he did, was yep, did arrested Chank, for harassing in the first place. Did Chank sleep through all of 2020 when there was mobs in the street shouting to abolish the police? Did, he was initially did, did he miss that? He was initially defending the far left. Later came out and was critical of, of violence and riots, probably when he decided he wanted to run for president, and needed moderate support. Now that he's not anymore, no one on the left signed up for this. No, I'm, I'm so sick of hearing that because it is quite literally only the left that is advocating for these laws. Yeah, the way he said that no one signed up for this is kind of um, it's like if so, you give someone power, they tell you it's going to be OK. It's going to be OK. It's going to be OK they, they, for years. And you're like, I just don't think it is. No, there's all these problems. No, it's going to be OK. It's going to be then the final moment. They're like. Oh, I, I didn't mean for this to happen. Right. Like, well, I, I will, no, no, I will no, say like, just real quick on that point. They say it's not going to happen. You're overreacting far right conspiracy theory. Then when it is happening, they say it's not that big of a deal. You are you're overreacting. It's just a few fringe activists. And then when it is law and commonplace, they go, it's what we always wanted. Right. That's and it's do. a good thing. And uh, it's they a good usually thing. they usually pivot all the way to that. But fortunately, Chank's not that far gone. But sorry to interrupt. You're saying. Oh, no, I, I I, just I think that there is one aspect of what Cenk is saying is true in that 
no one elected these these DAs that Soros funded and and kind of pushed forward to what do you mean? to they, implement. They did it. They elect did. Them. They elected them for this very purpose. Yeah. The outcome well, is the goal. The, my my point is when they when they campaign, most of these DAs don't run on the policy of no longer enforcing property property yes, rights and do. violent crime. Not all of them. No, the, the, the Soros DAs quite literally say we're going to release criminals. We're going to enact bail reform. Well, if, we're that, going to if that's true, then I have no idea why people are casting votes. They don't votes. vote at it, all. We see Most it all the time. Most people don't oh, vote. Okay. Yeah. And we had the New York City Police Commissioner come out uh, a year, two years ago saying that we need to end bail reform because it's doing really badly. Illinois ended cash bail like three years ago. We see this all over the place. This is what happens. Violent people get released. <clears throat> they go back and wreck more havoc on society. And then you have Peter and Navarro yep. in prison while he's waiting in for an appeal in his contempt of Congress charge for not complying with a January 6th committee well, subpoena. This, and that's absolutely insane. You have is. this old man. It, it could potentially be a death sentence just sitting there waiting for I'm his gonna, appeal. I'm going to say it again. He doesn't to, get bail, but all these people do. To all the people who keep saying you can't blame the cops, there are officers who put a journalist, Steve Baker, in shackles as they brought him in. It's federal law enforcement. Don't get me wrong. I get it. I get it. Very different. There are police officers that will lock the door on Peter Navarro. There's correctional officers that will open the door for criminals to be released and then arrest you for jaywalking. That's well, the, right. What, what's most infuriating to to me and the, the I'll speak for the libertarians on this one. Hopefully they allow me to. Um, I, I'm I'm heartbroken because the reality is that there was a lot of peaceful you know, nonviolent offenders is what libertarians were most concerned about because being the the land of the free and having the most uh, you know per capita incarceration rate was an atrocity in my opinion. However, no one in our camp, as far as I know, was interested in releasing people that were guilty of violent crime or property crime. It was only the nonviolent drug offenses and and you know diminishing the the severity of sentences when it comes to nonviolent issues at minimum. This has become bedlam. And and what what will be a, a consequence of this? And this is I think is is plays perfectly into Cloward Piven strategy of of sowing discord so that in in that implosion, what what will the people turn to? They're going to turn toward the state, the state which exactly is responsible for creating this crisis in the first place. And they're going to say, "Protect me," and that's going to increase their their power ultimately. And and. At this point, I can't even blame them because if you're looking at this insanity like Anna Kasparian is, it's very human to say, I need someone to make this stop. And we do. We need to we need to see it stop. How long until uh, she announced she's voting for she's voting Trump? <laughs> oh, do <laughs> you think months. she will? Do you think she would? Do when uh, based she on based vote. on this rant, I believe there's a strong probability that Anna Kasparian eventually comes out and says she's voting. Trump. We got to have her on some shows. Culture war, IRL. She liked a couple of my or one of my tweets about a month ago too about self improvement. She's I like think, definitely on a good path. I right think now. Anna's arc mm -hmm. is that she, like many other liberals, began actually fact checking things for mm -hmm. the show, and it probably occurred when she was wrong about something, got a bunch of tweets, and she was like, "What was I wrong about?" And then checked. Yeah. And I think the being called a uh, a, a uterus haver or, yeah. or it's or, infuriating. No, no, no. She, she there was something that she was called, a, and she said, "Hey, that's demeaning. Don't call me that." Yeah, they attacked her for it. I think this pushes her in the direction of, look, when you fact check the news, you're instantly right wing. That's just it. Cenk Uger is an agent of propaganda in that he says, it's only a few activists who want this. Tell me then how the law got passed as they campaigned exactly for this. If because that's it true. is not. It is the leaders of the political movement who have been screaming to the high heavens, abolish the police outright. Writing in the New York Times, yes, we mean abolish the police. And then when you go, how did this happen? Uh, because y'all campaigned for it. I will, I will say this, though, you know, if you want to see the Anna Kasparians of the world actually consider Trump, that she had another vile rant uh, just last week where she was arguing against foreign our, our foreign policy and the aid that was being sent to Israel. Now, I think that it ought to be applied universally that the, the America First movement, which I think really brought Trump to power, was supposed to be focused on domestic politics and, incre and increasing and improving the, the lives of the American people and kind of setting setting to the back burner at minimum the foreign policy uh, you know issues that we've been dealing with my entire lifetime. And now you have Trump that's campaigning on he's the biggest friend of Israel and he's going to take care of them you know better than Biden ever would. And I think that Anna Kasparian is not going to be a supporter of Trump for that reason. I think she's probably going to end up in the RFK camp, but he's also uh, pretty pretty pro-Israel, so I don't know. Someone Anna knows is going to get mercilessly beaten in the streets of California. Yeah. 
like this, 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 this crime is happening so intensely. It's affecting everybody. And it's fascinating that especially with illegal immigration, when I talked to, uh, like I mentioned a couple weeks ago, I was talking to this Gen Z guy and he says he's voting Trump. He voted for Biden in 2020. And I said, I think, I said, I think the reason that uh, Gen Z is shifting towards Trump is because of illegal immigration. And he was like, yeah, that, that's it basically. And I was like, my view is this woman whose parents died and she inherited the house is the perfect metaphor for this country. Our parents and, the, and, and our parents' parents and our parents' parents' parents planted trees whose shade they knew they would never sit beneath. Mm -hmm. To be real, they planted trees they actually sat beneath. Right. They built houses. They lived in them. They built bridges. They crossed them. And then they said, when you are old enough, you will inherit all that we have built. This woman's parents die. They leave the house to their daughter and their granddaughter. And the police arrest the woman for trying to take her birthright. Yeah. And this is what we are seeing now in this country. They are bringing in criminal aliens, non-citizens flooding this country. Crime is skyrocketing. And they are and they, the, 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 these, these Democrats don't care. Gen Z is now asking the question, where is the home that I was supposed to inherit? Where is the job? Where is the life? Where is the American dream? It's not there for me. Well, I got news for you. Democrats gave it away. Right. They're giving it away every day at the southern border. That's why we oppose this. No, I, I think that's absolutely right. And and when you see the the migrant that came across that viral clip that I'm sure you're, I know you're going to play here soon, um, <clears throat> when you see in his eyes, there's a, a level of like really the the ideology, the philosophy actually it transcribes pretty well onto leftist voters in this country. It is one of envy and viciousness. It is one of, of the, the desire to, to steal things that have not been earned by them. It is a perception that those that have earned have not in fact done so in a just fashion. It's one of jealousy and envy. And I think it's a very, it's a, you know, I'm not even a very religious person, but I think it's very, uh, you know, they talk about this in the Bible quite a bit. So it, it's it's one that that leads towards disaster. And I think that that's what we're witnessing is is decades of people being educated at the highest levels in academia to believe um, that meritocracy is no longer valid, that that What's if you get ahead, is, it's it's in some way evil. So let me, let, you don't let, have let's, to believe that stuff. Let's jump to the story. We have the tweet from Libs of TikTok. Holy smokes. TikToker is advising illegals on how to take over Americans' homes via progressive squatters' rights laws. This TikToker boasts that his friends already took over seven homes. Unreal. Now, speaking Spanish, I don't know. Uh, I mean, there's an English translation, I guess. We can play the video. Oh, we love X. Let's play the video and the video freezes because that's what X does. Gente, he pensado invadir una casa en Junei Este. Ya que me enteré que existe una ley que dice que si una casa no está habitada, podemos expropiarla. Capichi, muchachos, aquí en Yunei State también se aplica la de invasión de terreno. Y creo que ese será mi próximo negocio. Invadir casas abandonadas. Ya que me he buscado unos códigos con mis amigos africanos y me dijeron que ya llevan como siete casas expropiadas. Y como dice el dicho, papi, hay que buscar la vuelta. Y la vuelta ahorita mismo es invadir casas. Ya que nos encontramos en situación de calle y es la única manera que tenemos para no vivir en la calle y no ser una carga pública. Capichi, la ley dice que las casas abandonadas, deterioradas y que esté en mal estado, podemos llegar y repararlas, vivir en ella y si podemos venderla. Hasta pedir créditos con ella. Okay, so I don't speak Spanish. I only uh, I could understand about half of what he was saying. Same. The the top section in writing on the video says we could invade houses in the u.s what do you think of the new law and uh you got a guy basically saying yo let's go and take these houses well i think this is actually a, a good opportunity for me to uh push back against the open borders crowd in the libertarian movement there is this perception amongst many in the open borders uh libertarian movement that Every migrant is just someone looking for a better life that ultimately, uh, if they were to be here, they would have and uphold our values and 
that's as simple as it gets, and they ought to have all of the same rights that we do, human rights and whatnot. I am I am a firm believer that that the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, does not grant us the right to self defense. I do think that it is a universal human right. However, you do not have a right. All over, not not all seven billion people on the planet have a right to be an American, and therefore, not all seven billion people have a right to come to America well armed. That that so, that looks like an invasion to me. And as a domestic, uh, you know, born and bred person, I think it's fair to perceive it that way. Particularly when you have gentlemen like this that are coming across the border saying, "I intend to seize your homes." So for for people who weren't watching, there is a translation, but I'll I'll I'll, I'll give you the gist of it. Dane hit me up. He speaks Spanish, uh, his first language. Dane. He's saying there's a law you can steal someone's house if they're not in it. And then he says his next business will be to invade houses, since some African friends of his have already done it seven times. It's the only way to get by and not be in the streets. Steal them, fix them, and resell them. He said something about his, his you know, right of return, he mentioned. Something like Did that, you hear yeah. Him say that? Land invasion. Crazy. I, uh, you know, honestly, I, I look forward to hearing the news. These people are going to go to New York. It, it's insanely easy when we look at that woman who got arrested and take nothing they're going to be able to do about it. Someone's, here, here's, here's what they're going to do. They're going to get, they're going to go to a cell phone store. They're going to say, yo, give me a cell phone. And they say, what's your address? And they're going to tell them the address and they say, okay. Then they're going to say, uh, email me the bill. They get emailed the bill and the receipt with the address on it. Boom. Just like that. Yep. Now they can go to the place. And say, I have, I have a receipt from one month ago. See, I live here. Yeah. That's it. They can, they, they can get an Airbnb, pay rent to the Airbnb, get a cell phone and then go to the Airbnb, stand outside, call the cops and say, I've been unlawfully invicted. Can you open the door? Right. And they'll. Okay. Well, and then, uh, I mean, the obvious next step, and this once again plays into Cloward Piven, is that amnesty is not far off. I mean, it, it, you have to- You got to explain Cloward Piven. Yeah, who okay. is that? Cloward Piven, it was, uh, it was a political strategy that was formulated in the 1960s by two gentlemen named Cloward and Piven that they ultimately- uh, they, uh, they, I, believe you're, I believe you're correct. This oh, really? Was the, this was the thing Charlie I thought it was. and James Fox, Piven Lindsay is a woman. were both- Okay, sorry, not Cloward. gentlemen. <laughs> My mistake. Yeah. Um, but but anyways, the the concept was that in order to collapse the system and overwhelm it to to create, it's basically it plays right into to Marxism communism that uh, in the ashes you can you know create whatever you wish. So the the way that you create the ashes is to overwhelm the system. You overwhelm it from multiple fronts, including debt, finance, uh, manipulation of the currency, and ultimately you know abdication of of duty when it comes to defending property rights. Things you, of that you, nature. You Drug overwhelm use. every every element of the system to where the system can't hold anything anymore. That's and collapse. What the British tried to do to the Chinese at the end of the 1800s too the, the, what the, the Boxer Rebellion was all about they were like get out get out stop shipping opium into our well, country you're killing us I think it's really important pe for people to understand that it, illegal immigration has been an issue our entire lifetimes but but when you look at the historical averages throughout you know the Bush administration all the way into the Clinton administration we're, we're now talking about figures that are 10x what they were on average, that is not organic. And if you actually no, look at, it's definitely not. It's organic. not organic. But but people continue to talk about this as if like, well, these people are just here looking for a better life. Look, that doesn't happen organically. It hasn't happened until now. You have to ask yourself why. If you look at the United Nations, if you look at the funding, the the United States taxpayer is being robbed to fund the United Nations, which then turns around and hands out cell phones and maps and financial support to this migrant caravan operation that is ran by these NGOs to get these people here. The the reason that it's north of 3 million annually and increasing is because it's an op that's being ran. If you look at the United Nations plans when it comes to Agenda 2030 and, and all of the things that play into the World Economic Forum, this is not organic. And until people are willing to have that conversation, until people to realize that this is not just happening out of the blue, if you look at what's happened in Europe, if you looked at the crime rates that are increasing, all of this is 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 coming for America. And it's it's like, I well, feel like people are sleepwalking right into the, it. The, the other thing too that I think people don't realize is that you can, if you're an, if you're an, uh, a would-be an illegal immigrant, you can download an app that was manufactured by the Biden administration called CBP-1. And it's an app that you where you can request an appointment to present yourself at a land port of entry to enter illegally. You can do that. You can make an appointment. And the Biden administration also in 2023, they said that their plan was to double the number of refugees from Western from the Western Hemisphere and would commit to welcoming thousands of additional refugees per month from the Western Hemisphere, the goal of doubling um, to and it was where were they? It was Venezuela, Nicaragua, Cuba and Haiti were part of the expanded parole process announced to accept up to 30,000 individuals per month from those nations. Wow. 
That is their plan. They said it. They put it on their website. They said this is their plan. It's not just the United Nations. It's literally the Biden administration telling everybody that this is the plan. Like you saw after Biden was elected, there were people lining up at the border with thank you, Joe Biden t-shirts on. Well, and keep in mind that the United Nations is predominantly funded by the United States of America. So any plan that they have that they're pushing is ultimately still being dictated to a certain extent by U.S. government officials and vice versa. It goes, it's a kind of a two way street. But the reality is that if you actually look at the language that they're using when it they come they, they're talking about equity they're talking about all of the same woke nonsense that that we're all pushing back against in the united states of america this is a global plan to bring about equity when it comes to nations they want to have the the poorest amongst us in all over the world it is now our duty because we've had it too good for too long we now have to have these people come here so that they can benefit from the the you know institutional wealth and success that we've had in America. I reject that entirely. I am not a globalist. I still believe that that there is something to be said for meritocracy. If you want to uphold what made America great, including property rights and capitalism, you're going to have to reject this open borders nonsense. And if you don't, if you refuse that path, you will end up in a socialist hellhole. And that is exactly what the LP of Louisiana and any of these open borders libertarians are advocating on behalf of. And I'm going to lose a hell of a lot of support for saying you're, this, you're, but I am telling the goddamn truth. You are in the Anna Kasparian camp where you're saying, if this is what it means to be a libertarian, I'm not a libertarian anymore. Yeah, absolutely. And, we, and we, don't, we, don't, we don't have a token libertarian to be like, no, no, you're okay. You can still be a libertarian. Yeah. Well, well, and you know what? That's fine. If they if they want to reject me, there there will be a the the delegates will decide end of May if if my perception of these matters is in alignment with their belief system. Murray Rothbard had a very similar rev- revelation in the 1990s. He realized that the USSR had used illegal immigration to flood, uh, you know, Eastern Bloc nations to topple them. I believe strongly that's what we're witnessing. If a libertarian is going to advocate on behalf of open borders, when that is in alignment with globalist plans that are being pushed by government in- institutions all over the world against the American people, then you have lost the plot. Yeah, you, you have lost your mind. You mentioned that the UN is is part of this 2030 agenda thing where they're involved with funding the migrants. Um, and that you said that the United States is the biggest funder of the UN, but I think I take issue with that only in that it's the banks, it's the global banking establishment using the US dollar through the Federal Reserve, through the Bank for International Settlements to pump the UN and screw the people of the United States because American constitutionalism is in the way of oligarchy. It's, it's blocking the technocracy that's trying to control the planet. Right. Oh, I, I agree. They're, these are these are supranational institutions, but they, at their core, though, they uphold values that I find totally reprehensible. I'm not interested in globalism. I am not interested in socialism or globalism, and these people push that through every lever of power you can imagine. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you in our next segment to the death of the Libertarian Party's chances at winning <laughs> anything. Now, of course, it's fair to say no one really expected Libertarians to win, and I'm not trying to be a dick. Sorry, Clint. It's okay. But the, the Libertarians do very, very well, but they never do quite well enough. Well, now we have this tweet from the Libertarian Party of Louisiana. Whether you're a citizen, legal resident, or undocumented migrant, you deserve the right to defend yourself and your loved ones. Rights are for everyone. Arm the migrants. The purpose of the Second Amendment is to protect people and their rights. Those under attack deserve the right to defense no matter where they're from. The reason why I say this is officially the death of Libertarian Party's chances at anything is that in this country, you have Democrats, moderates, Republicans, independents, all in agreement that there is a crisis of illegal immigration and crime. And now the Libertarian Party of Louisiana publicly announced we should give guns to these people. Yeah. Now, I know it's just the Libertarian Party of Louisiana, right. but we know how branding works. Yes, it's not it's not beneficial to the broader movement, in my opinion. Um, in my estimation, no disrespect to the LP uh, Louisiana, but they are the Funhouse Mirrors version of the LPNH of New Hampshire. Um, and, and you know what? The people that love this messaging absolutely despise me, and they despise Lu- uh, Libertarian Party of New Hampshire, and they despise Dave Smith, and they despise Ron Paul, and that's fine. If you want to have that fight, we can have it. The, as I said, the delegates will decide, do you want to uphold the the uh, vision that Ron Paul had moving forward and, and elect someone like myself to be our representative, or are you interested in going in the complete polar opposite direction? I want, I'll jump to this story from the post-millennial. Federal judge rules illegal immigrants can possess firearms under 2A. Now, at first, I tweeted, don't care, Second Amendment, we should just be able to defend ourselves. But someone instantly made the correct point that as criminals— They actually have a a due process restriction on those rights. And 
Yeah, actually, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. If so, uh, typically, when it comes to uh, do, uh, constitutional rights, they can be restricted through due process. However, considering these people are already determined to have entered the country illegally, the crime is an, an afterthought. Criminal status is inherent in criminal alien. Therefore, they should not be able to possess firearms as they are criminals. Well, I got to tie it right back into Clara Piven. If you're if you, if Donald Trump is to be reelected and he is to uh, do as he's promised many times, the largest deportation uh, you know plan in in American history. Well, if you're going to arm the migrants, that's going to make this a very tumultuous, as Luke Rudowski might say, uh, situation. I, tumultuous. I, I, th yes, I think Rudowski. the unfortunate reality is no matter what ends up happening, if the end goal was to create a, an authoritarian machine, exactly. it is inevitability. Exactly. Right but that's now, the game. we have Donald Trump will get elected. And when he does, he will begin deporting, deporting people. They will begin going after corrupt individuals and they will move towards a security state in an effort to stop the crime created by Democrats. I see no other solution to dealing with the security uh, issues in our cities and crime and illegal immigration. I suppose perhaps the answer is our communities need to be stronger. We need to defend ourselves. We need to go to uh, either community centers once a week to meet our neighbors or church, whatever it may be. But short of that happening, what likely will happen is in the event Trump gets elected and began, begins to enact what we would feel as a cleanup, he will not be president forever. And then if Democrats make a move in 2028 and inherit any of these powers, then we're just in for Then we're hell. screwed, yeah. Well, That's the thing. So it's a rock and a hard place. Your enemies yes. are going to use the same things that you, you know, put well, aside for yourself. Exactly. And this is exactly why I was pushing back earlier and saying, let's let's let New York go because no, I would no. rather have tech. No, just just hear me out. The, the, reason, the reason I'm saying that is because I want to have the Floridas and the Texases of the world allowed to uphold my beliefs. The, this country is divided Texas irreparably. Texas is on the brink. Well, that's true. It is. Yes, but, but the, the idea that like communists have taken New York, so we better let them take it. Well, the, that's insane. Here's the reality. <laughs> you can say it's insane. You can say it's it insane, is. Tim. But here's the reality: those people have all of the institutional power. What you're advocating for now is far more likely to be used against you than you so will ever use it against them. Let's Welcome take to the war. Institutions, yeah. Who are the, who, well, I'm not interested which, in war. Which, which which side were you on? Are, are, which side? Who are the good guys in the Civil War? I don't think there was the good ones guys. that didn't fight. They, right. The, well, I don't know about that. You had slavery. That should not exist. Right. But then you had Abraham Lincoln being like, let's arrest politicians and judges. Let's arrest people without cause and without right. uh, one guy famously got arrested and was locked up and he refused to cooperate. He was like, screw you. F off. He was in Maryland. And they created a corridor from D.C. to Maryland, from D.C. through Maryland to Pennsylvania, where they suspended habeas corpus and just arrested random people who they thought were troublemakers. Yep. They arrested, I think it was like, what, 26 members of the Mar Maryland state legislature for having Confederate sentiment. That's basically what Katanji Brown Jackson was arguing for in the uh, in the Murthy versus Missouri case the other day. Well, not arguing for. She's not supposed to argue for anything. But there she was out there saying, doesn't the government have the right to sus to basically violate the First Amendment in a time so of crisis? Let's 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 try this. It's <clears throat> horrifying. Why why uh, why didn't the Confederates march after the first battle of Bull Run into D.C.? You tell me. I don't know. They didn't think there was a war. They thought that was it. We repelled the North. The North invaded the South and we pushed them back. It's over. And then the North said, we need more troops. More people go. And it expanded the Civil War. So when you talk about we should have a national divorce, we should let these, these, these states go. Those states don't stop. The communists who are in those states aren't going to be like, yay, we're independent now. They're going to say, OK, send the police down to Jersey. Jersey's ours next. Yeah. And then you're going to go, you can have Jersey. Then they're going to go, okay, Maryland, you can have Maryland. Now, yeah. now Rhode Island, it's all yours, all yours. And then eventually all you have is Florida. Right. And then they surround Florida and they go, and now right. we will do what you did not. And we will take you by force. This is, this Correct. is always, this is always the biggest debate when it comes to military conflict is where do you put your feet in the ground? Are you willing to fight at this, at this point? Or do you think it's, it's more prudent and practical to withdraw, reinforce and re-up? I don't know what the answer is. I'm, but at the at, at my core, I'm extraordinarily against war. So I'm going to avoid it until it's the absolute last option. That's and I think, and it is not war. It is the prevention of war for Donald Trump to criminally charge under our constitutional laws and the legal process the corrupt individuals in these states. Look, Fonnie Willis is accused of perjury. The guy she was dating who resigned was accused of perjury. Yeah. The judge telling them to break up confirm there was an improper relationship, but then doesn't 
penalize Fonnie Wilson in any way. Right. Okay. There needs to be a criminal investigation there. The Trump lawyers and have Donald, permission to appeal on that. And Donald Trump appeal that ruling. getting into office and then saying, I want my AG to investigate perjury and crimes. Hunter Biden accused of perjury. In in this hearing How today is he not with in Bobby Linsky, of this is amazing. Right Bobby Linsky testifies that Jim uh, Biden is in text records confirmed to be at a meeting that he said to Congress he did not attend. That's perjury. Right. It is not declaring war for Trump to be like, OK, well, the law should be upheld. Well, here's the issue. Will will Trump do any of what you're describing? And I like I've said it many times. If Trump's rhetoric matched his actions, there there could be some some hope for a second term of him. But when it comes to going after we're talking about the the most deeply embedded most powerful institutions that have ever existed and it's and it's one man who's facing 750 years in prison and half a billion dollar fine well, right well, now what do you think trump's doing right now if the concern really was that trump would do nothing trump would have immediately gone to the deep state and said i'm not going to run again leave me alone let me go live in my golden toilet and they would have said yes instead he says i declare war well maybe and maybe he's got maybe five or cases against him. maybe or yep. they would have come after him regardless because they want to send a message to any political dissident in this country My, that if you challenge us you go away I, forever. I think Trump could have easily gone to them and said, "Let's well, it's over. I'm just going to be an old man on my golden toilet." And they would have said, "Okay." And I wouldn't have blamed Trump if he had gone that route. But And my point is, the fact that Trump is actually fighting all of this yeah. indicates when he gets in, it is going to be fire and brimstone. You might be right. Or it could also be out of desperation that he realizes if, if he doesn't prevail in this election, he's going to prison for the You're rest right. of his so life. You're right. So then when he gets elected, what does he do? Go, now I have four years to, to hold off the deep state? Yeah. Well, he's got, if he's if he has learned the lessons, the, the reason I'm skeptical, other than what happened in 2020, is because he has already allegedly said he's not going to have Vivek as his VP. I think that yeah, he needs to Yeah, he's going to put him like in a that. cabinet position, put him head of Homeland Security. Is that what it, is that the yeah. report? Uh -huh. Okay, I don't know. Right. So when, when, when Trump says... Nova Vake, you're not going to be VP. I'm considering you for head of Homeland Security or head of, uh, Secretary of Homeland Security or whatever the position is. That sounds more like he goes, Vivek, you need to do what you said you're going to do. I'm going to put you in the position to do it. Okay. VP well, then wouldn't do that, anything. Then that's yeah, great. Yeah, VP doesn't do anything. Just well, look at Kamala Harris. I am not VP's saying. VP's life insurance policy, and he should definitely have Vivek <laughs> as his VP. <laughs> this is my point. Like, whoever, if you're going to challenge the, the whoever, deep state, you've got to have an insurance. He whoever he picks needs gonna, to be worse than him. Yeah. yeah. Well, and he needs somebody. Select me, Trump. Right, so that I'm right here, buddy. <laughs> so that nothing happens no, to who him. No, who would be a good, like, Vermin Supreme would be great. It's got to be Vivek. Oh my god. Yeah, because they'd be like, that's basically a threat. I feel like what we really need is someone who could go out there on the campaign trail and like be as strong at rallies and things as Trump is. Well, Vivek's the only guy that's in the only. GOP I've seen do that even close. Yep. Yeah, that's the challenge. But uh putting uh, the the rumor is homeland security, in which case that's very much likely v Vivek firing everybody. If he would fire everybody. He said <laughs> yeah, he would fire everybody. Well, that's so fantastic. He would fire everyone and then deport everyone. I was interested in him as AG because I, I think that prosecutions is what's really, really necessary. Yeah, but that's what cash can do. Maybe yeah, if it goes with cash, that'd be interesting. Uh, look, there's lots of there's lots of options and there's lots of reasons for optimism. I'm just saying this dude is up against it. Like they are coming, they are throwing everything look, they have at him, and they haven't even they haven't even really begun to fight. They can we, go way harder. We don't know. We don't have any guarantees that Trump walks into the White House throws off his jacket and he's just got like he's, he's he's been working out he's ripped and he's like you have no idea what comes next i wish perhaps what we get is just a little bit just firing of bureaucrats you get uh, uh you get a, a cabinet that actually starts dealing with crimes actually starts enforcing the law it shudders what we're seeing with georgia and new york and this democrat corruption it may be Joe Biden is all they have left. Who do they have for 2028? They got nothing. What about Newsom? Probably no. that's about it. Newsom, like... American psycho? I, I gotta tell you. <laughs> Newsom has, I don't know, a, a, a B minus, right? Trump has X factor. Biden certainly doesn't. But they squeezed everything they could out of universal mail-in voting and, the, and this shadow campaign, they called it in Time Magazine, to make sure Biden won. But Biden also did, to be fair, have that Obama nostalgia effect. After him, Michelle Obama is a maybe, but she clearly doesn't want to do it. We'll see. But they do not have any backbench. It may be that after Trump, there's a huge Republican backbench. I mean, Tulsi Gabbard's effectively a Republican at this point. People are talking about her as potentially VP. She's moderate. That Like, you've got a wide range of Republican potential candidates for 2028. 
Unfortunately, it's not DeSantis, but you know, that's his own fault. Yeah. I just, what, what I'm disappointed in is that not even setting the Trump issue aside is just that there hasn't been any justice for the 2020 era that has come from the uh, conservative Rand house. And it's like that, that was the one thing, you know, with the Thomas Massey's and the Rand Paul's of the world, those are, those are my people. And the fact that we haven't seen, you know, any tr- criminal charges that are being brought. And I know it's, I know They've it's Biden's, I know it's Biden's AG, but it's like, man, we need, we need to have repercussions but for what they, what they put did, us through. Look at what they did to Delaware, right? So in Del- so they had Hunter Biden, they had charges for him. The IRS was like, Hey, there's definitely charges here. And they essentially coord- colluded so that Hunter Biden didn't face any charges. And then the guy who was appointed to be the special <clears throat> counsel to investigate Hunter Biden is the attorney general general for delaware <laughs> right. who like used to chill with beau biden yep. let's let's jump to the story from the post millennial california rep katie porter predicts trump will soon quote have his demise i don't know what his demise is going to be but he's going to have his demise mm-hmm. i do think that we're allowing in a larger way the fear of trump the stakes are so high for lgbtq rights for abortion rights for all of these things that we care passionately about mm-hmm. To, to allow certain forces that benefit from the status quo to convince us we can't afford to change and we can't afford to be different. And I think the, you know, the ultimate problem with that is we're having a real problem with younger voters. Mm. We're having a problem with people choosing to register no party preference. Yep. Like, how do we build our party? What is our forward future message? And I think if I take anything away from this race, I really tried to focus on that. What are we going to what are we going to do next? Where, where do we go in our economy? Where do we go in our society? And I think that the specter of Donald Trump looms large, and, and I absolutely feel that. Um, and so people were like, we got we to gotta think everything, every decision has to be made in tension with Trump. Mm. Soon, Trump will lose or go to prison or I don't know. Have a heart attack. I'm not sure. We call yeah. it the hamburger I don't know what his demise is going to be, yeah. but he'll have his demise. And. The hamburger from heaven. The hamburger from heaven. Jesus, these people are sick. Dude, Trump was the first and he president. Was an Obama, that was cool but he was right? an Obama speechwriter. That guy. We had talked. Keith Olbermann was to, was. We one can hope or whatever he said when. Mm-hmm. Oh right. Yeah. I mean, these people are these people are Although, deranged. You know, for I mean, we have talked about Joe Biden being very old, nearing the end of his life, multiple times. That's right. Those both those guys are very old. It's not out of the question to talk about either of them dying no know? no no Wait. but none of us have said we hope and pray for a hamburger from heaven yeah right. that's not the way forward you yeah that's know. not what we i have repeatedly candidate. said i want joe to comfortably sit in his wheelchair with a blanket on his lap in the sun and enjoy his days yeah yeah it's- i keep saying he should be surrounded by his grandbabies yes even that little one in tennessee well for a time <laughs> katie porter was perceived as being kind of one of the the future representatives of the democrats i mean they, they're just so they're such deeply unimpressive people and I, and i and i and i'm telling you on all sincerity the fact that these people rule over me, every day I wake up pissed about it. Like they're they're none of them are superior to anyone sitting in this room right now. They're all just they're just criminals to their core. They're not even good at lying, but they made a career out of it. They're reprehensible. They're just really, really bad human beings. And I don't know how we've gotten to this situation other than to say that public education has made people so stupid that they continue to put these scumbags in power. And no one ever even reflects on it. It's amazing. I, I also think that the power makes people scumbags. The opportunity to to, to grab whatever you need and to be Certainly. given things that you didn't know existed by corporations and stuff. Like, though, I don't even think we we should have humans in that role. I think we're getting to the point where that kind of thing can be automated. Uh, Maybe not all route. of it. I go the other route and say that but, those but roles how, just shouldn't exist. How can you uncorrupt that system? It's totally corrupt. It's, the, the whole way it's built is like a corrupted pyramid. Well, this is this is why usually political establishments swing hard left to hard right. Is that once it gets this corrupt it requires a strongman dictator to come in and arrest and lock up all these all these criminals but then because he's holding that that ring of power so close he's he's oftentimes corrupted himself uh this is this is going to we're going to find out a lot about bukele in the in the not too distant future with el salvador because what he did was basically miraculous but he took extraordinary power to be able to do so and everyone's I'm, happier they they are for now yep. but will he relinquish it will he will he still honor his principles i think i don't will. know I don't know. I think he will. The question is, though, it's not so easy to just say, will he give up his power? The question is, what if far left WEF sponsored dude comes up and says, vote for me? Should he then give up his power to them? The answer is no. Yeah, (laughs) I I agree, obviously. But it's still can you can you have a stranglehold on power and maintain who you are? There's very few people. Ron Paul is is one of the only Thomas Massey are the type of guys that I think could actually be that close to the ring and and not lose their soul. It's extraordinarily rare. Have you guys heard this stuff like 
I just I hear these rumors. I love the eschatology stuff about uh, the red heifer. We talked about the red heifer. You guys know the red heifer. Mm-hmm. So apparently, there's like potentially a bunch of red red heifers that may just explain that really quick for people that are listening. All right. So uh, I, I don't know a whole lot about it. Only a little bit because people have brought it up on the show and we looked into it. We talked about it on the culture war. Uh, At least you know it's a female. I didn't even know Clarence and Piven were females. So. <laughs> Well, no, Clarence's a guy. Fran- Francis. <laughs> so, yeah, Strike one three, of, one of you don't know who Francis Fox Piven is? <laughs> no, I, I do. I just, I read the paper. I didn't, Bill I didn't Ayers, look into the Weatherman. Yeah, I know, all I that know. Stuff. So uh, the red heifer is basically, there's a prophecy that if there is a perfect red heifer with no blemish, they can sacrifice it at the third temple or whatever, which signifies like it will bring about the Messiah. And so there are Christians who believe it will return, it'll bring, it's the return of Jesus. Right. And there are Jews who believe it is the first coming of their Messiah. But that puts them at direct odds with Muslim nations because they would basically have to. What's what's that mosque? I don't know enough about it. Oh, oh the the El one. Aksa? Yeah, El, El Aksa. Yes, they would have That's to the because one. they would have to take that position so they could sacrifice right. the heifer. And then now we've got like there's this solar eclipse coming, mm-hmm. and then like a lunar eclipse that's forming an X over a certain part of the country. Yeah, a bunch of towns named Nevea. I, I read this right. Long yeah, yeah, about yeah, it. yeah, yeah. I learned yeah. last. I, week, I didn't look into much into it, but basically people are like, yeah, the world's ending. I learned last <laughs> week, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Anyone that studies Judaism, that the second coming of Christ is going to be either economically and peacefully. Or it's going to be a warlord that does it through death and destruction <laughs> well, and chaos. So we so, get to pick so we have no right idea. now. We're, oh, we, we're oh, we choosing our path. It's right, going to be cool. one or the other. Cool. And it's either going to be a very wealthy guy that can unite the world, or it's going to be a killer that unites the world through I, military. I just got. I got to take this opportunity to shout out Candace Owens. This lady has been going to absolute going to the mat, fighting fighting off uh, the the recent attacks that she's been dealing with, and and I've been blown away at her courage that she's been willing to do so. She also uh, was kind enough to have Dave Smith on the show, and they had a fantastic conversation. So wanna, shout out to Candace. Yeah, and Candace, maybe, I don't think we had that story pulled up at all. Candace was talking to a rabbi, and he 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 got upset and said that you're being um, anti-Semitic. But the I, first I watched, thing he says is yeah. you're being misogynist or um ah, i mean yeah. uh anti- he's just using buzzword he doesn't even know what he's saying he says that she's being misogynistic that should be the headline I watched, the rabbi told her she's being misogynistic I, I, watched, I watched the entire 90 minute interview and it was it was spectacular having her actually play the content with, of her having the conversation with tucker and then the guy doubling down right after she proved out i condemned hamas i said it right here and he's just like yeah but it was you know moral equivalency and yada 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 and it was just like man i just you can't win you can't win but i think i think she did an incredible job at staying calm because i could not have sat there for 90 minutes having someone calling me an anti-semite over and over so, again especially on video back, chat. back to what we we're talking about eschatology i have this image where we had a <clears throat> annular solar eclipse in october and then total solar eclipse april 8th and the x is over texas <laughs> that's, that's cool that's, that's very funny. close wow. to where uh all the bad stuff is wow. happening yeah. right now that's it's it's basically right there isn't it yeah and this simulation that's, is uh, awesome. uh and what it's is also it McAllen? spacex right or is it uh, no eagle pass eagle pass yeah. yep yeah. it, it, it goes pass. right over eagle pass and like like 20 different towns named nevea i was like what is what are the odds of this how do you nevea. spell the nevea i think it's n-a-v-e-a-h it's like heaven backwards yeah um I could be wrong on the spelling, but I, I read a thread. It seemed like some skins, schizo post. I have no idea if it's legitimate, um, but I, I always find this stuff very interesting, regardless of whether or yeah. not it's true. I, I'm finding more and more of the synergy of reality. I, yeah. It is very real. You, the, the the internet itself is an aspect of this. Uh, our synergy, I, we're, we're coalescing and coordinating as the species, and it's like, yo, this, this whatever you want to call well, it, resonance a, is pretty There's cool. a lot of people that are in positions of power that do believe in this stuff, and I think that many of them are actually trying to drive us towards it. And that that gives me great pause as a non-believer that you have people that are, have access to nuclear weapons that are like thinking, hey, we got to make this happen. It's like, good Lord, man. I No, thank you. That sounds demonic. I'm not very religious, but like you're going to try and force a prophecy. That sounds well, demonic. Those to things me, are supposed to happen out of benevolence, yeah, I think. To me, to me, it's uh, it seems as if that would be against God's will. I, I would hope that yeah, to, it's the to, will of man. They're forcing the will of man. That's, uh, that's above not, God's. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know. That's, that's my, you know, non believer belief, but we'll see. Yeah. I, we just, will. I just, I just hope we don't, I hope I don't live through revelations, man. Come on. Don't do this. We me. are in revelations right now. That's what the internet <laughs> is, is kind of part of that tool of revealing, uh, what they we're got seeing. to you too, Ian, you believe it now? Uh, uh, well, I don't, I don't, I mean, I do believe, but we're regardless of the Bible, we're in a time of revealment right now. Uh, well, that's true, that, definitely, and I hope that that's the case. Uh, speaking of revealing, I gotta gotta deliver this to you. This is from the demonic one herself, Josie, the redhead libertarian. Uh, is she, it a pie? No, take she, it back. 
<laughs> she, not half. she she painted you some artwork, so she asked me to to deliver that to you. Oh man, is it a painting of a pie? Probably. Well, while Tim opens this, uh, I'll, I'll plug my Twitter at Liberty Lockpod. Follow me, thank you. Yeah. Oh, there's a picture of Mr. Bocus. Yeah. Shout out painting. to that guy. Legend. Oh man. Legend. He will oh, live cute. he will live in eternity. Yep. That, that was him. Cat. That guy was so yep. unique as a cat. Well, thank you, Josie. Thanks, Josie. <laughs> what were we talking about? Oh yeah, oh. they're predicting Trump's death and all that stuff. So we were talking about the end of days. Yeah. I br I brought that up because people have brought it up to me. Because if there's one thing people pay attention to, it's not politics, it's loose eschatology and what i mean is it's not literal eschatology it's basically just being like i heard a rumor the world's ending right and then when you look at how crazy things have gotten and you've got this like solar eclipse and then solar eclipse making an x right over basically eagle pass you know that's wild that's yeah. so weird i mean the sun is a magnetic <laughs> being you know so is the earth and so are we but that's pretty what the moon you know it's it's it, phew, that is so cool <laughs> What is going on, dude? They're going to talk about this time in history for like a billion years. Oh, you, uh, if it's if it's actually revelations, there's going to be no talk about what's going on right now. I don't think. I'm not sure the apocalypse. I, I think that comes out. We come out of it. Okay. The, yeah. Well, those that are left behind, is that is that the case? Yeah. It's, it's what is it? Hell on earth, right? For eternity or whatever. Yeah. So I I don't think they're going to be having many books written or conversations if in fact that's what we're facing. I'm just imagining like well, well we're all doing the show and then all of a sudden like. Seamus just starts lifting up from his seat and we're like, wait a minute. And then he's like, oh, I guess it's happening. And he just rips to the ceiling and then he's gone and we're like, damn. What are you, you going to do? God, <laughs> God, God would never accept that alcoholic. <laughs> Shots fired, Seamus. We, we Sorry, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just upholding you Luke's know, legacy of talking crap to Seamus. It, it, I think ultimately it's about doing the work every day because it, we can talk about what's going to happen in the future, but it, all it is is we are just living the present every yeah. moment. Well, so to the future is the moment next time yeah um, and we're, we've got to create the best version of it exactly and I, I think this has been you know the point that i've been trying to make with my twitter and my show liberty lockdown is like i'm trying to reach the libertarian audience that is already you know in terms of understanding the paradigm that we're existing under currently they're miles ahead of the average person because they've been very skeptical of of institutional power they've been very skeptical of the media they've been very skeptical of the financial institutions they've all of these people are very, very advanced when it comes to trying to become independent and function outside of the system. But I think that many of them still fall prey to not understanding the complexity of the power structure that that rules over us. And and this is why I think that the open borders I issue has been such a dividing one. And I think this is why, you know, this shock jock type posting where it's like arm the migrants really doesn't do us uh, justice as messengers because the the we still function under a democratic system. People are still going to have to vote for us. And if your if your perception is that there is any electoral pathway forward, which obviously they don't think so, because otherwise you wouldn't be posting something like that. It is extraordinarily unpopular to say that the 30 million plus or the you know 5 million, 7 million that have come across during the Biden administration, many of which are gang members, I might add. Not, not all, not even close to all, a very small fraction, but some of them are very violent people. And for the LP Louisiana to say, arm them is just so detached from reality. Yeah, what they need to focus on is yes immigrants can have guns if they're legally here that's okay you don't have to be a citizen have a gun you got to be legal you got to be here legally yeah. that's that's it man. well my, my perception of the, is this everyone has a god-given right to defense you have every right to defend yourself in the nation that you live in not everybody has a right to live here so that's 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 the dividing line i'm not i'm not saying that that the bill of rights grants us our right to self-defense that is god-given however not everybody is an american yeah but still if a dude's a, a Palestinian in the United States and he gets jumped, he has the right to defend himself. Oh, no, of course that, he That's a human right. That has nothing to do with the United States. Of course. But do you want do you want people that came to this country illegally that have criminal records from the nations they're coming from to be armed legally in America? No, I don't. Yeah, exactly. But that now they're going to tell you that you're against the human right of self-defense. Or they'll, they'll try and do amnesty and then they'll say, look, now they're all legal. Exactly. And I'll be like, and, oh God, I'm eating my own words. And, it's legal now. And, and I then, said, all you need to do is make it legal. And then the electoral outcome becomes an impossibility. It's just complete <clears throat> uniparty rule for the rest of our existence. That's this this that's this election. So we got to resist uh the this this amnesty crap if donald trump does not win it is going to be democrat single party north korea but speaking about like 
like just acknowledging reality okay like ron paul was saying the 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 he believes the american republic has lost uh november 22nd the assassination of john f kennedy so like trump really you think he's going to stand up against the empire like we know what happened to all those roman emperors they just kept getting killed one after the other one after the other one after the other and like we're kind of at that stage i'm just trying to be real i don't want this to happen but i'm just saying i'm not going to pretend like i didn't think it this is an interesting opportunity to talk about a metaphor that i've been thinking about nero was actually the first uh you know roman leader that was responsible for essentially ma manipulating currency for over 300 years the uh, I think it's the denarius, uh, the silver coin, held 95% purity. And it was Nero was the first uh, ruler that decided to to melt it down and start to debase their currency. And in short order, every uh, ruler did the same and it, it ended up being confetti. And I think that in my, in my opinion, you could either point at Greenspan, you can point at Bernanke. One of them was Nero. And I don't know which, I don't know who to actually hang that title on. Oh, it but, would have been Greenspan. Yeah, probably. But, but in terms of like actual just profligate spending, I mean, you could give it to Powell because it's totally out of control, even though he's been hiking interest rates. And I respect that. Uh, Regardless, the, the people that are in control of the money supply in this country have absolutely doomed our children to a future that is much more uh, destitute than our own, and I am never going to forgive them for it. Fortunately, people like me that understand this have already divested ourselves from the U.S. dollar to a large extent. It's just not very easy, and it doesn't uh, bode well for a, a functioning civilization moving forward. Let's, uh, let's jump to this clip from Fox News about Kevin O'Leary and talk about what's going on in New York, because we've been ragging on New York all day. Let's listen. But more importantly... The message about the American brand. You think about America, the reason this is the number one economy on earth is that we have laws and we have due process and we have property rights. It attracts foreign capital from all around the world. All of that is being shaken to the core here. The concept of seizing assets in 30 days on a bond number that's never been issued. No insurance bond company's ever issued anything near this. So there was no chance it was going to happen. And only giving 30 days notice and time, that's a really bad message. And I think New Yorkers should think well past Trump, whether he's president or not, or whether this attorney general is gone in four years or not, it's irrelevant. This is case setting against the American brand. The most stable country on earth, not anymore. anywhere, to put capital work over a long period of time, particularly in real estate, is the United States of America. This let's, is let, let's, let's break down real quick what he just said. This is about the fraud case against Donald Trump. A $454 million bond, which now is up to like 500 and something, mm -hmm. has never been issued. It's an absurd number. No one has that kind of cash. That was the intent. The, the entire judge, point was to bankrupt Donald Trump. The judge issued a summary judgment. There was no trial. The judge said, I hereby declare Trump committed fraud. Now we're going to determine how much you owe us. That's that, what that happened. Is Trump still had that that no happened. trial. It's kangaroo. Kangaroo. They court. gave him 30 days to come up with half a billion dollars, which doesn't exist. Like people don't have that cash laying around. No one does. Mm -hmm. Or they're going to take his properties from him. This is New York full-fledged communist takeover. I mean, it's not it's not dissimilar to what we're witnessing in, in Brazil either with either Lula or Bolsonaro. It, like, we are now in the era of arresting our political enemies and putting them away or or finding ways to make their lives so Bolsonaro miserable. Bolsonaro just got out. indicted for exactly. falsifying his own COVID vaccine card. Yes, yes. Wow. And, yes, isn't I'm, that ridiculous? He and his daughter both did. They didn't want to take the COVID vax. The government was like forcing everybody to take it. And so Bolsonaro was like, well, we're not going to do it. And so he falsified his own record so that he could like leave the country and do stuff. But this well, thing, that's that's the reality of yeah. where we go. That's what we have next. Uh, well, well what, we, what have we have now, now is quite literally, yeah. uh, like, look, in these communist countries, do people really think that it was like the premier and the dictator just went for no reason? I'm going to steal your building. No, it's for your and own then, safety. No. No, it it's was for your own this good. man has been accused of a crime. Mm -hmm. He has been hereby accused of this crime. One, two, three and four. He must go to jail. What say you all? All right. To jail with him. Yep. They don't just walk up and say your building is now mine. That's simplistic. They always try to justify it to maintain plausible control, like right. plausible governance. No, no, we are here to we are, we are here to enforce the law and the safety of the people. Kevin O'Leary is on uh, CNN. 
And they had a Washington Post woman who's smirking the whole time like, it's to protect the market. And Kevin's going, the market is destroyed by this. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to invest in New York now. He doesn't. And he's telling her, there's no market anymore. That's but right. these communists are just laughing, being like, good, we don't like it. Well, and you even had Kathy Hochul addressing the concerns that New York business owners would be concerned by this and would, you know, essentially divest from New York. And she basically came out and said, no, we're just doing this to Donald Trump. Yeah, that's well, what she said. It's just like what Katie Porter said. She said that the basically the entire Democratic platform is set up to oppose Donald Trump, not to oppose his policies, not to oppose his ideas, not to oppose the Republican Party, not to oppose, you know, different plans for the United States or a different future than the one she envisions. Their entire party, she said, is set up to oppose Donald Trump. And that's what they're doing in New York as well. And that's what they're going to do. They're trying to do it in Georgia. You know, they were trying to set this up against Trump in Colorado. Um, yeah, that's where we are. I, I think if, I, if anyone continues to do business in New York, specifically in real estate, I think they're out of their minds. You know, it, well, this is exactly why O'Leary is so activated. I would imagine he never voted for Trump. He's probably not a Trump supporter, but he has tens of millions of dollars of real estate that exists within New York. Oh, hundreds. Yeah. Well, and he's probably like, I got to get out. I got to get out. What do I do? And he can't just divest. Exactly. It's too and, difficult. And, and you know why he can't divest is because everyone all over the world who has forever looked at America as this bastion of security and safety when it came to investing is now looking at America and saying, this is a politically weaponized system. And if I deploy capital here, and this is actually ties into- Like Venezuela. This, this ties into my opposition to your perspective on the TikTok bill too, in that- if you start to weaponize uh, the government against, you know, alleged foreign enemy nations, which they just listed off those four nations, well, that that dries up foreign investor capital because they realize that we're now we're now in a, an activated, uh, you know, kind of militarized financial system. That, that's and a bit extreme. That's true. Uh, if you, if no, you, it's not. Yes, it is. If you're, if you, how many, there, how many people live Germany in China and, not, and invest in Germany, real estate in America? Germany is not concerned that they will be named by Congress in a bill as an enemy of the United States. Okay, what about the 1.5 billion people that that work and create in China? China was in a codified bill listed as an adversary of the United States. Right. So, so if they chose to invest with that being the case, they made that decision, which proves your what you're saying is not correct. Well, because it hasn't gotten to as bad as it can possibly get, but it, it, well, it once if, you once you once you start to ban their products outright, uh, it's going to it's going to give investors pause when it comes to investing. Chinese Chinese investors in, we, in we American real estate we, is we don't, astronomical. And we'd want them to go away. Well, if that's if that's your perspective, but we don't want China to own our economy. The craziest thing about the TikTok bill is that you have people defending it by saying there are people, there are thousands of people who run their businesses on TikTok. We can't, we can't shut it down. And I'm like, wow, the Chinese Communist Party has control over a portion of a, a large portion of American business. Wow. That, now I'm even more in favor of this divestment bill. They should not have that power. See, that that's, that's I think, a little bit unfair framing. Given If that the Libertarians party, Party's position is that we should allow our foreign adversaries to have control over our market, our real estate, then the Libertarian Party is not a serious well, political party. you got to well, beat I'm, them at I'm their own game. I'm interested in free market trading. I am. I, that's been a Libertarian the, You have to get them forever. to defeat themselves because if we let the president decide at will who's the enemy and but ban their products, the well, that's what that bill does. It does not. Yeah, let's I don't care if you don't like the enemies. bill. I don't care if you don't like. No, it Did doesn't. Did you read section? 2G? I read the whole thing. We went over the whole thing. I don't yeah. care if you don't like the bill. What'd you You're think allowed. About it? Let me finish. Okay. You're allowed to say that government weaponizes bills and will misconstrue them. All of that is true for every single bill imaginable. But what I am sick and tired of is everyone lying about what is in the bill. I understand. So we we went over a bill in Congress that would give an unelected bureaucrat the right to ban farms. Ain't nobody talking about that one. It would allow them to send an inspector to any farm and say, you are no longer allowed to produce milk. Ain't nobody talking That's about that one. terrifying. Well, it is. Can, and can so I, why is everyone so obsessed with TikTok? Yeah. And the point with the TikTok bill is, if you are concerned about a bill that would allow the president to declare that one of four enemy nations has an has a financial interest in a social media app that has more than 1 million users, where users are, are able to log in to both share and view content. It is a declared national security threat to Congress and has been adjudicated in D.C. If, 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 if you're going to say all of that and say, and I think that's a bad idea, say, okay. But if we're talking about, my, my, I, I'll, I'll, just, I'll say it again, my issue with it is that people keep lying about what's in the bill because they're trying to win a political argument. Yeah. Instead of just coming out and saying the bill would do these things, 
it is possible the president will say something like uh, this guy, Igor, has a financial investment uh, uh, of 20 percent in Truth Social. It was bought on the public market. He has to sell that. That's the first thing that happens. That's it. It's a divestiture bill. Banning is only the enforcement action against a company that doesn't divest. Right. From from a from a, one of four foreign adversaries. I, I, I agree with your your description of it. The the issue that I have and I, I align myself with David Sachs analysis on this and I forget exactly the, the clause. What's the name of the bill? Why is it so hard to find? This is freakish. Why it's is a it a not- really long name? Yeah, it's like I don't the federal it exactly. it's HR seven five two one or something like that. But the that. point he was making is the same one that Ian was bringing up that the the description of under I think it was under the control yeah, HR seven five two one under the con- right here. under the control of is just too broad. I do not trust I mean, this is what I find fascinating. You, you're you as big a skeptic of the Biden administration as anybody. You understand that they've weaponized the political system against Donald Trump and political dissidents all across this country. I am not interested in empowering these people further. And that- So agreed. Stop passing any bill whatsoever. Sure. And- <laughs> and and stop and and I, I call on Thomas Massey to stop putting out of context snippets. I call on Rand Paul to issue a correction that ByteDance is a Chinese owned company. And he he was got that wrong. wrong. He got that wrong. And I call on everyone else to stop. Uh, I call on Tucker Carlson to retract his statement that this bill would allow Joe Biden to ban any news website that opposes him. That is factually false. Yeah, well, it, it, 100% yeah, false. It its, could not its do current, this. In its current existence, yes. It could not do that. Yeah. There's no reason to say those things. Please oppose the bill. Tell me why you oppose the bill. Right. And I'll say you're entitled I, to oppose it. Why? Look, my problem with the corporate press and the Democrats is they lie about everything. So if Thomas Massey comes out and, and cuts context, if Rand Paul is wrong and Tucker Carlson is wrong, I'm going to say these people are wrong. Yeah, no, I think that's totally fair. I think that the the argument that the Thomas Masseys and the Justin Amash and the uh, you know Rand Pauls of the world are making, including Ron Paul, he came out against it too, including myself, Dave Smith, a whole list of people, is that we are... We are essentially shell shocked from what the the power that the federal government has accumulated through periods of crisis without demonstrable evidence of the claim. I have not seen, and I'll ask you just bluntly: Have you seen any definitive evidence that the CCP is actually dictating the algorithm when it comes to TikTok? Because because Marco Rubio and all of these other neocon scumbags pretend as if they've seen it, pretend as if they you have it. That they have a board. China, the CCP has a board member on TikTok. It has a board member. Yes, that's but, right. Yes. How, can is that can evidence? I, that's can, evidence can, enough to you? That, that means yes. they built the, yes. the algorithm. Can I can I FOIA the Chinese intelligence agencies to figure out their communication with TikTok? The answer is obviously no. Well, if they're doing business in America, maybe you can. I don't know. No, no you, you, you can't. can't. You but can't. I can FOIA the FBI, the NSA, the CIA. It doesn't mean I'm going to win. But at the very least, we did get through FOIA proof that intelligence agencies were in active communication with our social media, right. and we were able to take some action against them, to which it is currently going to the Supreme Court. That is a very, very challenging and difficult position for American people to challenge these massive multinational corporations headquartered in the United States. Massive, yeah. And we still at least have the ability to have FOIA requests of our intelligence agencies and figure out these things are going on. Right now, we, we do not have that with TikTok and the CCP. We can't even begin to ask them what degree of control. And it's already been speculated. The reason they won't sell is because they want control of the algorithm and they don't want to reveal what it is. Unfortunately for us, I have no intention of believing the communists have this beautiful algorithm that is totally neutral and just shows kids what no, they like. No, no, no algorithms are neutral. I mean, you would. OK, you're right. There are neutral algorithms. But if you don't show it, it's not neutral. China is not going to re- release the algorithm under no circumstances because it is a weapon of war. Now, check well, this out. It, or it's just the most advanced algorithm in the world. Wait, look, let's just consider for a second that that Mnuchin, the, the Treasury, uh, I think it was the Treasury Secretary under Donald Trump. He has now gone into uh, private practice. He has his hedge fund and he is he is arranging to acquire TikTok, the domestic version of it. Yep. I, I think that that is absolutely reprehensible. If you believe it's a weapon of war, then you should want it abolished entirely, correct? You think we... See, this is the difference between revolutionaries and reformers. I think it's better that Amazon owns TikTok than the CCP, and Amazon is bad. <sighs> correct. But you think it's better the communists own this massive platform with U.S. businesses and our children on it? That's I, insane. Well, my, percep- my perception is that the, the gravest threat to me and my family is not the CCP, it's the United States federal government. Right. So I'll say it, I'll say it again. We have, we have a, the ability to take action against the U.S. government. We have actually won tremendously when it comes to, say, Second Amendment rights. 
we have nothing to go against the CCP. And if they control any amount of our economy through real estate, farmland or TikTok, if they're able to influence our youth, as Yuri Bezmenov warned us about, we have to take action to prevent that. Talk to me about this bill for a second, because we haven't really gone too deep. I want to. Section 2G is the definitions. This is where I was like, oh, God, my mind started to get twisted. Reading what the bill actually means. The def Always go to the definitions when you're reading bills, because they'll tell you, oh, that word we used, it means this. So controlled, the term, someone that's controlled, something that's controlled by a foreign adversary. See there, 1, 2G, section okay, 1. Okay, so let me tell you. Yeah. Controlled by a foreign adversary, specifically in the definitions, refers to another bill where this is codified by Congress as China, Russia, North Korea, and Iran. So any other, as soon as a country becomes codified, then th Congress, that will become part of this. If Congress comes together and declares under that specific subsection an amendment that would add or remove, it would change these things. Yeah, but, that's but dangerous to, because to, if to, someone yes. has a, a network that is messing with us, then Congress might be like, well, they're definitely an enemy. Well, the, I mean, the, the counter argument is exactly this. You've already had an outright lie that Donald Trump was being controlled by Vladimir Putin. Is it such a is it so far fetched? What was, what was, the, what was the legal legal result of that investigation? Well, after seven years, I mean, so we so still we, you, so, you could still in right. the interim have have Elon Musk forced to divest of of X. Yeah, the argument you're making is not about this bill. It is about all bills that pass through will grant power that will be used in ways it wasn't intended to be used. I well, completely agree with that. Well, but I, I'm so also saying the that, bill, that the exact language it on of this its, on, on its structure yes, and not uh, on. General government corruption. I, I well, I am, in, uh, but I'm in, I'm opposing it on the structure in that it says right there that control, control nope. is too broad, or or a subject to okay. the direction, or the the direct, not the control, the yeah, direction control or of direction. A foreign and, person and, and is what, domiciled what, in. And what did they say about country. Donald Trump? They said that he was being controlled or directed. He was being foisted upon us because of a hundred thousand dollars worth of they ads on Facebook. They could immediately ban Truth Social if this goes through. No, they can't because of Trump's. Well, they, well, uh, see, this is the, how this many is, users does Truth, Truth Social have? Not many, but but uh, to be honest, I don't okay. know. Good point. Well, it needs to have at least a million. Well, it's it's probably out. got a million. A million active users. It's probably got active a daily. But it doesn't see, say it just says active. Here's, That's a bad bill. It should here, say daily, monthly. This is a t these people do not know what they're doing. Here's, this, is here's, this is my problem with the bill. No one is reading any bills. The hot shot buzzword of the week comes up and all of a sudden I got people on the right posting nonsense about the bill they didn't read and ignoring all the other bills that are worse. One bill that's currently going through Congress would give Joe Biden the right to stop oil exports and control oil. Yeah. And you're like, but social media. And I'm like, dude, it's fine if you don't like the bill, but I am. Yeah, be, I, be honest about it. I agree. I am. I am. I am sick of everyone hounding and screaming rabble, rabble, rabble. And I'm like, guys. All bills do this. All of them do this. Yeah, they do. All of them. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and it's a and problem. So, so there is no way, there is literally no way you are going to craft this bill in the way that's going to satisfy anyone. This well, is Truth Social has shorter. a roughly 2 million monthly active users as of March okay. of 23. So, so the, we've already okay. gone over this 50 billion times. I don't want to keep rehashing yeah. the, same, well, the, the, the same hypotheticals of what would happen. But let's stop. First of all, it's not a ban bill. The bill does not allow you to ban as an enforcement action after 165 days and a refusal to divest. The enforcement action is companies in the United States cannot host you, which means you can still distribute and market your product in any way you want. It's not banned. But wait, however, who's going to host it? Russia or China. But on what, what website? What are you talking about? Russia has servers. In fact, many people use Chinese servers to host their American websites all the time. Yeah, but I mean, the what, what, for what, what, are you using businesses? Verizon to tap into it, to, to download it? Like, That's what do you, who's your, who's your, ban okay. So if TikTok does not divest after 165 days, they can begin enforcement action. If ByteDance doesn't divest, right? Right. Yeah. If, if, if TikTok doesn't say ByteDance, you're out. Yeah. What ends up happening then is the app store on Apple removes it and the Google Play store removes it. American servers must stop hosting it. Right. It can be hosted in Canada can be hosted in the Bahamas, can be hosted in Venezuela, can be hosted in any other country, which we do have access to by typing in words into a browser. Many websites you go to are actually <laughs> not even hosted in the United States. By typing in words. If you want to use TikTok at that point on your Android, you need only go to the TikTok.us and download the APK, APK file and click install. It can't ban it. You can't ban the internet. So at first, when Thomas Massey posted saying it could ban websites, I went, whoa. That's crazy. 
That would shut down VPNs. That would shut down Telegram. So I pulled the bill up and read it. And I went, oh, Thomas Massey has removed critical context that explains that's not what's going to do. It would penalize American businesses for working with an adversary of the United States on specifically a social media website named as TikTok or another platform with at least a million users where users can log in and share content, specifically social media, that has refused to divest from one of from an interest in one of four countries and failing to file adju for adjudication within 165 days. Right. So there is this long and circuitous chain by which Joe Biden could say Twitter's a national security threat. Here's my report as to why Congress can review it. He says Elon Musk is secretly working for Iran. That is insane. I'd say, I'd say it'd and be Putin not, more likely. And it's not going to happen. Well, we'll he would see. have to shut down SpaceX and Tesla if that was the case. Yeah. Well, I think this is the whole reason Elon hasn't been taken to the mat already is because he he works so much with the government that it would be a real, real issue for them. But, if but, we come to the point in this country where Joe Biden comes out and says Elon Musk's companies are forfeit and we are seizing them beyond what we're already seeing with Trump as like Trump, I think we're off the precipice with New York. But if the federal government makes those moves, you have a lot more to worry about than TikTok or X. I know, but I'm just trying to slow the <laughs> slow the bleed here. I mean, it, the, here's my, my bigger concern, too, is that giving the government the power to this is this is kind of playing into their mis and disinformation narrative that they've been pushing for the past three years very very harshly um also the actions that were taken by aws as well as the apple play store google all that um when it came to parlor like this was it, it was already kind of a shot across the bow when it came to trying to shut down social media that that goes against the the corporate narrative in a time when they don't have the control they had control of twitter before elon they had control of facebook and instagram and across the board but they they came very aggressively you want to know Parler. you want to know what the best part of this bill is my favorite part is definitions uh section two section b which says the term covered company does not include an entity that operates a website, desktop application, mobile application, or augmented or immersive technology application, whose primary purpose is to allow users to post product reviews, business reviews, travel information, and reviews. Yeah. In which case, the bill could only cover TikTok. Well, it could do like Amazon. Matt, what? You, what how could it ban Amazon? Um, I mean, I, as far it as I can't know, ban it's, Amazon. it's got a social network of... Uh, over a million monthly active users. And if it, and, if it and, 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 and a primary function is reviews. It's no, no, exempt. it can't. It does not include ones that do reviews, business reviews, or travel. That, that's correct. Like, so, they, so, so commerce so, is so not. They're it, exempt from it all. Yeah, but commerce is not exempt from it. But websites that particularly right, right, right. do commerce are you, not exempt. Right, you have to have a million users, allow users to post content and share content and view content. It has to be, uh, have, have, have a stated interest from one of four countries. And it can't be a website where you are posting product reviews, business reviews, travel information, and reviews. Well, the, who's, who's, see, uh, Massey, Massey brought up this point because he's saying this is evidence that it is not specifically targeted towards TikTok. Because, no, that's evidence that because, it is. Because you had a lobbyist for some corporate, I don't know, Travelocity or whoever it was, uh -huh. that said, we're concerned about what they're going to do to us, so we need to have a carve-out to make sure that we're safe. So all you tell me X, why I was there. All X need do is say... Post your travel reviews. No, no, only if it's their primary <laughs> purpose is Define to primary. allow... primary. Exactly. That's going to go up to the Supreme Court after the ban ha already happens. And no, like, hey, not after the ban happens. Well, it gets stayed. The, okay. the, the, the issue I take with this is people are desperately trying to find I mean, any excuse. To find primary, man. It's in, in the definition. Exactly. They use the word primary. It is not It is not dispositive. You, you, can't, you can't say, because I can make a misconstrued argument on language, therefore well, it will happen. If it didn't say primary, I'd be a little more comfortable. This is, this is, but this it specifies like a This is what like bothers a, me with this bill. Website. Is that everyone's basically nitpicking every word to claim we things the bill doesn't say. We have to, man. The Patriot Act... And that's the trauma. There's the PTSD. Yeah, it's not. It's not PTSD. There's a, it's, there's it's, a it's reason. It's PTSD. It's real trauma. There, it's there right is now. A, there is a bill right now that gives Biden control of like oil imports and exports. What's, exports. What's that bill called? I, I can't. We we, we the, last night on the members only. I started pulling up a whole bunch of bills. I'm like, here's one that allows an unelected bureaucrat to inspect farms, and it could ban their food, saying it's not human consumption. It's not 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 right for human consumption. So this is actually happening right now. There's a, there's a case going through. I think the Supreme Court where a farmer, they're shutting down his milk production. And everyone's just like, but if you look here, this word means that they're going to be, yes, look, any bill, all bills, they can do whatever they want. 
But for some reason, people are desperately like, China should have control of our farmland, our real estate, and our uh, commerce, our digital commerce. Uh, TikTok is known to be a social media commerce website. It is, de it is described oh, that way. Oh, this is the raw milk guy. I remember that. It's, TikTok is described as a, as a social commerce platform. It's, it, it's, it's people run businesses. They sell things. They're snippet advertisements. China should have full control of that. And they should be de deciding what our kids get to see. And so, I'm like, this is insane. Well, this that, should not be the see, case. But I think well, that's should, a bit of a straw man of my, of my position, at least. I'm not, uh, I can't speak for everybody. But my, my, my big issue is that you and I know, as people who make our living on the internet, how absolutely vital it is that we defend free discussion, free debate, free speech on the internet. And, and I am not interested in offering them additional power when it comes to this arena. That's my concern. It, I'm not, yeah, right. I don't even, I, I'm not I, even on TikTok. I don't I, even use I, it. I, I don't think, care. I think this is a tribalist argument that has no logic. It, like the idea that you would rather fight the CCP, who you have no legal standing against, versus our government where you have the Constitution and you have the Supreme Court. Who, who has more power over you, the CCP or your, your own government, Tim? This is what we are preventing. TikTok giving the CCP control over commerce on top of it's bad enough they're buying farmland. It's bad enough they're buying real estate. They're pricing out American working class people from the market. And we've been screaming about this for years. And now that we know for a fact that China through TikTok is gaining a major foothold in digital commerce and influence peddling to our youth, all of a sudden, it's not an issue anymore. Well, let's 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 inverse that because the whole reason that so many entrepreneurs rely on TikTok is because your government decided to lock them down and shut down their businesses in 2020, which now you have so many entrepreneurs that are hanging on by a thread. And, non sequitur. And that's not a non sequitur. It, we're we're you're, talking you're about- You're pointing the finger at the CCP. I'm saying that the reason that TikTok became so powerful is because your government is communist. That's the truth. And we have the constitution and the Supreme Court, and we have our best efforts through the electoral process, state courts, et cetera, to challenge all of that. And we've had major successes. The yeah, court of some. public opinion as well. Some. With TikTok, you have nothing. We need to free its when, code, man. That's what we need to do. And and that's exactly what the point of the bill is. I, this just now, makes him sell. When we when when it came, became clear that the Democrats were panicking over the pro-Palestine content on TikTok, a bunch of Israeli uh, pro-Israel uh, donors contacted Democrats and said it must be banned. Right. All of a sudden, Israel. Uh, I'm sorry. All of a sudden, Democrats got on board with the Republicans position on this. Correct. TikTok then sent out a push notification to all American users saying, do not let them do this. And then these people started spamming congressional offices saying, don't ban our app. China, this Chinese owned app directed American youth to change the laws in our country. And one, uh, uh, they just po they played this on Fox earlier today. One uh, representative got a death threat from someone saying that they would come and kill them if they voted on this one. Now, here's what I'm seeing. They're absolutely posting content that is manipulating young people. Yuri Bezmenov warned us about this. We should not tolerate it. They have a foothold in one of the foothold in one of the largest digital commerce platforms, and it's here in the United States, and we don't know what they're doing. And they have directed American citizens to change laws already using this app. It is a weapon. I understand. Facebook is is evil. I think they're awful. Face CIA book, we've called it for 10 years. Right. X is only okay now that Elon's got it. Even they're <laughs> right. not great. Right. YouTube is not good at all. Rumble is probably the best. I would rather, I would rather Mark Zuckerberg own TikTok than the CCP. Well, uh, I mean, Mark Zuckerberg and Zuckerbucks, he's responsible for Biden and, being the president of the United States, isn't he? Who, and, who manipulated our government more? And now you've got a bunch of, a bunch of states are backing away from that after being exposed. Not that it's a good, it's not like, not like we won or anything, but I can tell you this, we can put Mark Zuckerberg in prison if we want to. Not like it's easy, but maybe, maybe in a rare, yeah. you know, shoot to the moon and maybe you'll hit the stars. Donald, Donald Trump gets elected, immediately investigates the interference in the election that Zuckerberg with the Zuckerbucks put in and then says, massive penalty, fines, you're in trouble now. Yeah. You cannot do that with the CCP. That, that's all true. But it's also true that that I think that parents ought to be controlling their kids' intake of this content. And and I think that's that- That's not an argument to what we're talking about. Yes, it is. It doesn't- the, You're saying it's a weapon that's targeted towards children. I'm saying conservative parents who talk about I personal- I control commerce. 
No, you also said that it's right, controlling right, right. kids' and, minds. And so it is, it is, I, I, I think it is a non sequitur to say, yes, but this one thing I will attack. No, no, no. The point is the CCP has control in multiple facets of our culture and economy and politics right now. I don't care about each and every one. You can argue parents who do a better job. You're right. They should. It doesn't change the fact that they have a massive foothold in our farmland, in our real estate, in our digital media, digital commerce. And at the very least, we can all complain about the CIA, the NSA, the FBI, national security letters and all of that stuff. Yeah. But we can't do anything about the CCP well, controlled app. Here, here's, we have to take here's, action. Here's the truth of the situation, though. We are incredibly reliant on China's support at this point. They own a huge percentage of our debt. They own a huge percentage of our real estate. They have ultimately bolstered our economy when we would otherwise probably be in a depression. And 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 for the record, they are equally reliant on us because we are the buyers of everything they produce. So Bro, we are, look, we are, look, I'm not I'm not I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm saying that you need to consider the consequences of the plan that you're taking on. You are you are opting to make them an enemy nation and try and divest us when we are very intertwined. And also, Ron Paul has has advocated. So you're with the Democrats on this one. No, hear me out. Uh, we, we, want, not, we want NAFTA, put, we want not, free trade. That's not fair. Let's not try and put me into some camp because we disagree on one topic. What argument do you have for China is destroying us, let's just give in? Look, if the libertarian, well, if the if, libertarian if your position argument is, is that China is destroying us, that, that is an argument that needs to be made and with evidence. Been, okay, so how about the, the deal that we opened up starting with Nixon so we can get trade and we think that we're going to bring American trade to China and, and, and they're going to normalize and become like us and they do the inverse. Right. We've got the stealing of intellectual property yep. for decades. We have incessant cyber attacks going on since the, the, the invention of the internet. We have been under relentless attack, spying. We've got gain of function research. We caught in multiple airports Chinese nationals smuggling viruses out of BSL uh, out of BSL-4 through, through our airports unsecure. Yep. They've been doing these things, and there's so much more. They're sending fentanyl from the southern border into our country as revenge for the opium wars, as I believe Ian said yeah, several is. times. They are sending designer drugs over the internet and through Silk Road to our young people. They're tainting it with fentanyl, so they're dying. We know we're in active conflict. They want to take Taiwan. They're mad at us. We've got an alliance now with Australia sending warships. There is a fear that the economic expansion of China will lead to a Thucydides trap type situation, which could invoke World War III. Now, what we could do is say, maybe perhaps this is the point at which we stop allowing China to buy up our land, buy up our politicians. The th what was it the Thousand Talents Project, where they're paying professors to sell our research from our tax dollars to their country. It needs to stop. And all of a sudden, TikTok says push notification to all our users. And all these people immediately come out like zombies and go, we like the China app now. It would be wrong to ban China from buying America. And I'm like, are you nuts? <laughs> we have been complaining about China buying up our farmland and our real estate. We've been complaining about the drugs they're sending. TikTok is effectively their digital drug against us. And I agree. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, they're all bad. and They do similar things. At the very least, I can file a FOIA request against our government and, and, and chip away at the block on this one. Well, and we, we are should not be allowing case. China to do any of this stuff. And for some reason... TikTok decides they put it. You know, you know, you know, you know, I'll, I'll tell you my theory. When the Republicans made these moves to ban TikTok under Donald Trump and everyone agreed TikTok's smartest play at that point, which I'll just say hypothetically maybe happened. I think it's probably what happened. I don't know for sure. They immediately bolster specific right wing accounts on the platform and give them followers so that they can build an addiction among Trump supporters and libertarians so that when it finally came down to it, because they knew they were being threatened, you would get a wave of younger right-leaning people being like, no, 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 we can't ban TikTok. Why? I have followers on TikTok. I use the platform. It's totally fine. We're now seeing these people, I'm not going to name them, posting screenshots of the front page of TikTok being like, there's no indoctrination here. What are you talking about? And I'm like, it's a major digital commerce platform. I don't care if it's the farmland. I don't care if it's fentanyl. I don't care if it's TikTok. We cannot allow China to, the, I, they're communists. I, and I'm, I'm so over this. We'll go to Super Chats right now because we're way late. But it is remarkable to me that we're at this point now where we are banging our fists on the table being like the communist takeover is insane. They're seizing property. And you've got the active Chinese Communist Party courting our politicians. You've got people like Trudeau in Canada saying they wish they were like the Chinese Communist Party, like Xi Jinping. And all of a sudden, because of Israel, only because of Israel, Democrats and Republicans have decided TikTok's gone too far. And I'm like, I'll take what I can get, I guess. Or 
We can now all of a sudden on this issue decide we are all staunch free market libertarians that allow foreign adversaries that are destroying and attacking our country to operate one of the largest influence platforms in our nation and take control of the of the minds of our youth, whether that may be socialist or otherwise. I say no to that. Yeah, I think the better way would be to force them to free their software code to operate in the states as opposed to give the president more power and authority over social media is my personal take. Um, well, hope. Hopefully it'll go. I, I allowed for Tim's full. We got to go to super yeah. chats. We're 17 minutes past. <sighs> you, got, you got a 30, 10 second. Smash that like button. Subscribe to this channel. Share the show with your friends and uh, head over to TimCast.com. We'll have that uncensored show coming up in 13 minutes. But uh, let's read what you got. Clint Torres says, howdy, people. Tim, I got my first and second bag of cast brew last night. Focus with Bocus and wake up with Roberto Jr. Uh, we it's it's uh, Mr. Bocus pumpkin spice experience. Focus with Mr. Bocus. We have not yet made. But I think it's going to be called the legend of Mr. Bocus. Yeah. Clint says, Phil, if you're there, go to the gym. If Phil isn't there but watching, go to the gym. If Phil isn't watching, can someone kindly tell him to go to the gym? Go to the gym, Phil. And then oh, play man. Helldivers 2 with me later. Phil. We had a <laughs> personal trainer. We did some lifting today, and I lifted to the point of failure. And then uh, once we were wrapping up with like the cool down warm ups or the cool down exercises, not warm ups, he was like, okay, now we're going to do some push ups. And I, I couldn't do a single push up at that point. I was like, it's I'm not proud going. I'm you, man. I'm proud so of you. I, dude, Jack Tim Pool is coming to town. We did knee ups instead. <laughs> I was what are like, knee ups. So instead of instead of going on your toes you when you do a push up, you go on your knees. It, yeah. And okay. it, was, it was wild. He was like, come on, come on, four. And I'm like, dude, my arms are jelly. We like, I was lifting 35 pound weights. It was a, it was, we did 12, 15, 25, 35. Mm -hmm. And then we went again with like different, different sets. I had bought some two pound weights and I managed to injure myself doing that. <gasps> two pound two weights? Pounds. We yeah. got three pound Drink weights. Drink colloidal here. gold. <laughs> All I'm right, let's grab some more super gold. chats. Uh, what is this? I see this one. Where did it go? Uh, let's see. Tybo says, if the squatters issue and property rights issue isn't fixed before Trump is elected, it's going to be a bloodbath. <laughs> bloodbath we sold a hundred of those shirts by the way like were you guys hundred? i heard you talking about indoctrinating or not indoctrinating but inoculating your friends and family against the news said, you said that yeah have you guys been doing that have you been calling your friends and loved ones and telling them about the story before it break as it's breaking so that they know when they see the manipulation it, in real time they're like oh now i know what you're talking but you about. don't tell them about the story you say hey look at look at this video real quick it's 20 seconds long and then you play it for them so they hear everything. And mm -hmm. you go, I just wanted you to hear that. Well, the, the best thing about being a creator in this space now is that my mom, my dad, my stepdad, they all listen to Liberty Lockdown. They all call me and they go, oh my God, I was I was totally on board with XYZ until I listened to your show. And I, and I run clips on my show to try and dismantle the, the narrative in real time. And it's been valuable to them. And I know thousands of people are listening and they, they all say the same. So it's like, this is what we're, that's what I'm in this fight for exactly, is I want people to know the truth. No, I didn't call anybody or talk to anybody about it. Nope. Cat4203 says, I'm part of a community parent network. I just did training today. That was the most racist thing I've ever seen. Goal number one was how to eliminate racism in early childhood development. You know, did you see there was like a hiring thing? And it's, uh, I forgot what it was, but someone tweeted it. it was, maybe it was lips of TikTok. It said like requirements, BIPOC. Yeah. Like one of the requirements yeah, was that you can't be white. Is that you can't be white. Uh, they, yeah. they Char do that for Charlie a lot of was stuff. Charlie was trying to connect the. I think his name's Charlie. I've been blanking. Uh, he was trying to uh, find the source file on that, and he thinks that it may not be true. So I don't know. Well, starting next year, Washington State public schools are going to be required to teach uh, LGBTQ history. Oh my gosh! Wow. Yeah. So if you're wondering why American school children are doing so poorly in school, it's because they are learning trash. And not anything worthwhile. And, and have been this for is, quite some this time. This is what I discovered when I pulled my son out of school to homeschool him, which I got to say, parents who've been homeschooling this whole time, you guys are heroes. I can really only handle it for just the term. Jason Dixon. It's ridiculous. Jason Dixon says, Tim crying, cops are being gay and doing crimes again. I, I guess. Don't know what that means. It's a funny super. Well, the, the leftists slogan, be gay, do crime. Oh, I'm not it, really it, familiar with that it, one. <laughs> really? It's yeah, everywhere. that's a big, big one. But yeah. And it really does exemplify their their plan for this country. Yeah, be gay, <laughs> to be gay and and do, do crime. crime. That's yeah. what they want. <laughs> and then I love it because people are like, and then George Santos shows up and they're like, not like that. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to come on That's the show, funny. by the way. We just got to reach out he's to him. He's so endearing no for such a scumbag. Santos you know? should come on the show. <laughs> I don't know. I think he's a culture war guest. Yeah. yeah but maybe actually, bad. no, I, he, he could probably come on here and comment on the news. That's yeah. that's true. We the, the reason One of the reasons we launched the culture war, subscribe over at Tenant Media, is... Uh, because there are some guests that are like debate guests and specialists that are, don't comment on news. Right. So we've had we've had people be like, hit, I, I get emails and they'll be like, you know, 
so and so wants to come on the show and i was like what is what does this person do and they're like he's an evolutionary biologist and i was like really cool what was it colin was, would, would he like to talk about joe biden's election chances <laughs> right and they're like well i mean and i'm like this is a topical news show and we have a variety of news commentary personalities yeah. and individuals like musicians and those who are active in political commentary but the culture war is available for those conversations that's how we did it i'd like to get brett weinstein on I yeah, but like, but like, but uh, like, who did you? Who he, he did you talk, mention? He could talk about Colin everything. Wright. Yeah, but Colin Wright's been on the yeah, show. He's cool. Yeah, but he is a, a a commentator on the news and big culture yeah, issues. Yeah, he I, You said evolutionary biologist, and I was like, the only one evolutionary biologist I know is Colin Wright. And then, uh, uh, well, uh, uh, Brett Weinstein. Right. And uh, and he's also a, he does commentary on the news. So it's like you you can be a mechanic and comment on the news and. We'll say, yeah, absolutely. Come it, talk on the show. It was his interview with Tucker Carlson a few months ago that sent me down the rabbit hole of trying to figure out what the hell was going on with the Daring Gap and everything else. And that's when I that's when I did the deep dive to figure out about how the United Nations was funding the immigration crisis. And it's like <laughs> this goes so deep, and most people are like super sur super super surface level analysis on this. And I, I just hope that if anything, people will continue to do their own research and go deeper to figure out why this is happening. Why is it 10X the historical averages? All right. Hal says slavery was legal in the USA during the Civil War. It is still legal after due process. Slavery and racism were not only in the South. The North loved profiting from it and didn't end it until later. It will technically they didn't end it. That's a good point. You know, Kanye West got roasted for this when he said that we should repeal the 13th Amendment. And they were all like, what? You want to bring slavery back? And he's like, no, that's the amendment that allows slavery. After due process, you commit a crime, mm -hmm. they can make you a slave. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. They got, they Kamala Harris got people fighting wildfires in California for a dollar an hour. Yeah, she's a bad person. She's a very bad person. Second in command. Unbelievable. She was the one who was supposed right. to fix the what, border. My, my, more. my rant earlier about uh, the reprehensible people that rule over her or rule over us. She's like the one that comes to mind right away. I'm like, how how is she this close to the throne? KCB says, Clint, full prisons in a free country is not unjust. What is unjust is that criminals know that their victims fear prison more than they do and will not protect themselves or others as a result. Well, if you're going to consider yourself the land of the free and you've got more people per capita than uh, almost every other nation on earth, that's pretty That's pretty over the top. <clears throat> Do with that information what you will. Okay, let's grab some more super chits. Uh, Reddit Libertarian says, I will bring you pie soon. Make it gluten-free. I have cut the gluten out. Use a Love rice it. flour. Ooh, yeah. Almond yeah, flour is good, too. It's a little sweet. Right, rice flour is the best. Coconut it's flour. It's crazy. Try I, it. You just... You take rice flour, one part rice flour, one part water, you microwave it, it's done. Mm. That's crazy. Rice is what awesome. What do you mean it's yeah. done? It's, it's done cooked. doing what? It's food. What do you just eat the flour and water? Well, you can do whatever you want. It's mochi. So if, oh, if you- if So you, you could like make stuff with it. If you put sugar in it, you can make it spongier. But mm -hmm. uh, what I've been doing is I've just, because I don't want to eat bread, I just, one part flour, water, microwave it, butter and jam. Mm. You know what I like about rice as okay. opposed to a lot of foods that clump? Um, if you put a little bit of water into rice and cook it, it spreads out evenly amongst all the rice. If you put mm -hmm. a lot in, it spreads out evenly among all the rice. Like it's got its own communication. Do you have a good rice it, cooker? <clears throat> I think so. This is a good one. Jessica Rabbit says, why aren't banks lobbying for stricter squatter laws? Most of vacant properties are theirs. That's a really good point. Oh, because, that, that, that's why I'm really excited for this. Because like when the, when the criminal aliens start going on Zillow and finding all the for sale properties that are owned by banks and they just take them all. These banks are going to be mad. They well, are going to be mad. And that's what's uh, that's what's going to happen, too. I hate I hate to be blackpilled, but the reason that they're not throwing a fit uh, is because they expect, and probably rightfully so, that they will be bailed out in any sort of situation like that. The real address is, Tim, I call on you to hire a POC co-host who can talk about people of color. You want, like... Is no, it, is that is that a leftist attempt at getting us to do a DEI kind of thing? Dude, I'm on the show every day. Like, come on. Yeah, so and I and like I call American, on you to sue South Google, African like dude. Jeremy from the quartering said you would. Yeah, I said if Google did a thing, I would sue them, and then they did not do thing. I don't I don't know. Like, what do you mean? Yeah, I don't like the calling. If you, but, a you hire color based or a race. off of immutable but, characteristics, you're an asshole. Look at eyeballs when you talk to people. You know what? I mean, but, I'm you know, as they're... Native American as Elizabeth Warren, so I think these people. Well, there you really go. Look at this. Who, who isn't? And, 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 and I got to say, I am I am deeply offended by uh, Real Hydro's uh, white supremacy as the host of the show is literally a person of color. I, know. I, I am mm. mixed race. There literally. you go. And you know, my my uh, my ancestry was rooted in uh, deep slavery with Korea and Japan and. Yeah. 
horrible stories. I just so I'm insensitive. You deserve reparations, ultimately. You know what? I'm surprised yeah. that you don't right. have generational trauma, Tim. How well, did I do. you get so successful? I, I, oh. It's just, it's you everywhere. Did. Before yeah. before and after the show, Tim actually speaks in a Korean accent. Most people don't know this. That's true. It's yeah, true. and I hate Japan. Yep. Yeah, just, that's the worst. <laughs> he talks about throwing babies off clips. I'm sorry. I'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been to Japan. Japan's awesome, actually. Oh, yeah. Jimmy Corsetti is there right now, scoping out ancient megalithic structures. Hell yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. May says, y'all are hardcore simping for China. Beanie Boy is right this time. TikTok is a weapon, and y'all lied about the bill, deciding feeling smart was better than doing the smart thing. Yeah. FA1, and y'all have no inspiration left. Well, let's, let's just be crystal clear. I did not lie about the bill. I extrapolated based off of prior injustice perpetrated by the United States federal government. And let me also add, since I now have an opportunity to counter what Tim said, it was the, the Institute of Virology that you're talking about was being funded by your taxpayer dollars with NIH and Anthony Fauci. So you might yep. want to look into that. Which is why these are all bad things. Yeah. And we should stop them well well let's actually prove that our government is is in fact antagonistic with the ccp as opposed to in bed with them and do we want to empower them further given that they have the closest proximity in terms of power over us you pretty agree? sure we are antagonistic when we send warships to the taiwanese ta strait of taiwan and australia do you then, agree then why would we be funding their institute of virology why why i think if i think if you take a holistic view of what happened between the u.s and china it's that the u.s thought we could be good trade partners and slowly, especially over the past several years, it's begun to break down substantially. Notably, when mask manufacturers were based in China and their companies were based in America. And then when COVID happened, China ordered those ships turn around and bring those masks. And China just outright seized American property. This is what China does all the time. And Americans are just like, well, well I guess I don't care. It's remarkable that China does not have trade reciprocity with us, but we are supposed to have it with them as it pertains to TikTok. Are we allowed to operate Google in China? No. TikTok's not even allowed in China. They have Douyin. Right. So why are we allowing China to run ops in our country and buy our land and run businesses? Did you know that a foreign individual from any country can start a business in America? Mm -hmm. that, that's not, that's, that's Delaware, insane. Right? Yeah. The, in, in places like Brazil, if, if a foreign individual wants to come to Brazil, start a company, a Brazilian has to be involved. Right. And that's, gotta, how, that's how Mexican real estate, like most nations, not have, America, most nations have issues like that. But so I'll but, tell you about immigration. So what we've seen over the past, over, 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 uh, I, I don't know how long it's been the case, but you will get someone from Switzerland. They will form, they will file articles of incorporation in the United States and Delaware or something, start a company. The company will then do business with their company that they own generating money. That company in the United States will then say, we seek to pay this individual, the man who started the company, and then file for a visa to bring this person in, get, giving them the right to citizenship. They, they effectively buy their way in by starting companies here. Mm -hmm. we, we are like the only country in the world that has complete open borders relative to the rest of the world. It's, it's remarkably insane how America just basically says, our country is free for the taking. China has been buying up massive amounts of our land and it's just like, well, you know, that's fine, I guess. It no. is really messed up. They've no, been I, buying, China's actually been buying everywhere. When I was in Brazil right. in one of the uh, uh, favelas, I had a bunch of people telling me that like large portions of land is being just bought up by China. They are owning everything everywhere. Are they using fiat? Are they just printing? Yep. Print, print, print. Give, give, give. They're exploiting the system. They they have this this scheme where like a middle class person who owns a home, like a Chinese house is like a million dollars. A ridiculous little like yeah. garbage house. That way it generates fake wealth and they can put a fake on the books and then they can go to someone else and say, it's a million dollars. But what is what is backing that million dollars? I don't know, a 15 by 15 box on a hill with no running water. Right. Yeah. But a, a lot of the real estate that's being purchased in America by Chinese people is being done so because they still perceive the US dollar to be stronger than their local currency. Those people are, are in fact trying to you know, divest themselves of the inflationary process, which we're, we're also suffering. Um, so I think that, you know, what has made America unique is our valuing of property rights and free trade. I think that has made us the strongest economy in the world. Now, it is a fair debate to be had that should should trade policies be reciprocal? Should we only have free trade policies with nations that have free, free trade with us? That's I'm not sure what the correct answer is on that. If I don't want know. a free market. The answer is yes. Should they? Well, I'm saying will you only trade freely with them if they are going to have tariffs against you? Because historically, the American answer has been not, the, that it's not reciprocal. If you are for free market, you cannot engage in trade with someone who does not engage back. It's not free trade at that point.
So if your argument is we should allow, we should do commerce with China, we don't want to constrict foreign investors. The issue is that we have great things. And China says, we'd like to gain, we'd like to buy property in your country. We go, yes, please. Now we'd like to buy property in yours. They go, screw off. And you go, oh. And they say, and then they, they come to you and say, we want to, we want to sell products in your country that, um, you know, we think are bad. Right. And we go, well, that's fine. It makes money, right? Can we, can we do the same thing in your country? No. Right. It's it's what? totally it's totally unjust. I I just would prefer diplomacy to remedy that as opposed to increasing the trade wars and the barriers that ultimately lead us towards a hot conflict with a nation with 1.6 billion people and 300 I, nuclear I, weapons. I I do feel like your your positions entirely throughout this uh, conversation pertaining to say New York, California is capitulation and surrender. Well, yeah, I'm not interested in war, Tim. That's right. True. Well, I look like there will come a time when a man comes to your house and you'll say, "Better not go into fight with him." Yeah, yeah. You, you, you squatter can have my house. I'm a pacifist, you know, a but if you're being attacked, war. if you're being aggressed on, pacifism is not an option. That's the problem. And that's the problem we're facing. If, I do if, believe we TikTok go to the is a weapon. Show. You have to prove that we're being aggressed on. Um, I we're think gonna, they have we're to gonna, prove that they're not aggressive. We're going to carry the conversation no. over the members only show. So my friends head over to TimCast.com, click join us, become a member. If you want to hear us yell at each other some more, it'll be a lot, a lot of fun. We'll, there'll be more swearing this time. So it'll, it'll be silly. Yelling with swearing. Yeah, yelling with swearing. I cannot so, wait. <laughs> so go to TimCast.com, click join us, become a member. Members only on Censored Show will be on the front page in a couple minutes. Smash that like button. You can follow the show at TimCast IRL everywhere. You can follow me personally at TimCast. Clint, do you want to shout anything out? I would love to. At Liberty Lockpot on X, Liberty Lockdown is the show. Uh, I am back on YouTube at a month or so hiatus because I was not allowed to publish. Uh, you can also find me on Rumble. The show I do with Luke Radowski is all one word. We are change on Rumble. It's also the best political show. So take out your phone and search for Liberty Lockdown and the best political show and subscribe so that you never miss an episode. I also do Tower Gang, which you should miss every episode because it's totally, totally inappropriate. And don't ever listen to it or watch it ever. Tower Gang? Um, yeah, Tower Gang. Don't watch them ever. <clears throat> Thank you, Ian, for shouting them out. And that's it. And I love you guys very much. And thank you so much for having me, Tim. And, uh, right you know, we'll we'll duke it out in the after section. I'm Libby Emmons. You can find me on Twitter at Libby Emmons. And of course, you can check out all the great work we're doing every day at the Post Millennial and humanevents.com. Yes, watch me and follow me at Ian Crossland. And I mentioned at the beginning of the show again, with I did a, a little parody video. Well, it's actually a banging parody video with Tobuscus. Toby Turner. It's on his YouTube channel now, Tobuscus. So go check that out after the show. What, and then is come... it a, a parody of uh, um, Metallica? Yeah, yeah. And nothing it, else it, matters. Yeah, it's some funny lines in there. He was singing it earlier and I was laughing. L yeah, it's hilarious. So let me know what you think. Leave a comment on the video and I'll be reading those comments as, as the days progress. Uh, hi, Toby, if you're listening. I love all you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you later. Uh, I'm Serge. I'll see you guys in the after show if you are a member. If you're not, become a member. It's fun. Cheers. We will see you all at TimCast.com on the front page in about a minute. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you all there.